Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. In the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Got a shout out to the Miz and Duke the Dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah. This the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. Everyone, this is Ringside Rain, and you're listening to Can Crushers Podcast. And now, here is your host, Mark the Mark Martinez. Hello. Hello. We both might be a little tired today. A little bit, yeah. I'm on three hours of sleep, so. As well as I am. Oh, <laughs> wow. Welcome to Can Crushers. I'm Mark the Mark. That's Sir Michael Jenks. And we both watched SummerSlam at a random time. Some person in this podcast might have watched it twice already. Twice? For some reason. <laughs> and we'll get into all of that. Twice. Really? I can't wait to get into that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. How was your week? Uh, my week has been great, uh, capped off by the new addition to, well, I guess outside the office here, which Mark's shaking his head because he's so jealous I sent it to him this I'm morning. not even jealous, I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we- I got, I got a, I got a text on Friday from my girlfriend going, I have a surprise for you, but I'm not telling you what it is. Obviously it's a surprise, so she's not going to tell me. Right. That's what surprises then, are. <laughs> well, then I tried guessing and that led to, I'm not telling you, stop guessing. So Saturday comes, she comes over for a family uh, game night that we were having at the house here. So I ended up watching SummerSlam this morning, but that's not part of this story. Because of it, I'm sitting, she hands it to me. It's a on air sign for when I'm podcasting, I can turn it on. It says on air. It's beautifully lit. Blue and red. I sent Mark a picture. He was jealous, pissed off, everything. It looks great outside the office in the dark hallway. It just looks chef's kiss beautiful out there. It, so. re- it really is. Uh, Kimberly, I, if you listen, good. If you don't, uh, Jenks will pass us along. Bonus points. I love you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I did send her tex- your text to her. Said, this is what Mark thinks of the on our side, and she was loving that, so... Yeah. yeah, it's been a good week. Good. How about you? Uh, a, a nice week. Uh, a nice yeah. week. Um, I got a surprise in the mail. So I also got a surprise. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did the corporate cup soccer thing on Slugger Sports Network. Da, 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 da. And I get this package. I mean, Jenks now, no, he knows what it is because as soon as I open it, I'm like, it's a package. I'm like, what is this? So I open it up, and Chris Linderman sends me an autographed jersey from the kids in the game that I broadcasted. One of the four games, which is really cool. So he's like, here, uh, this is for all your hard work. Thank you for coming up and covering this uh, nice little note. Um, So yesterday I did some rearranging in the house to make sure that that – it doesn't go with the motif in studio, plus – Jenks has seen pictures. There's not a lot of motif real room. Yeah, real estate <laughs> left in studio. So I changed. I kind of changed the whole living room around. We changed some family pictures around. Um, we opened up another wall, though. So as soon as you come into the house, the outer wall of the studio is now dedicated to can crushers as well. <laughs> it's expanding. That is another mm, 10 feet of 8x10s, 11x14s or whatever. You keep this up, it's going to be the whole house. That's what I'm trying for. I feel like by the time 
65 rolls around for you, your entire house is going to be covered and it's going to start going on the outside of it? No, never outside. That's <laughs> I, I'm okay with having that house that looks run down with a broken window and everything because <laughs> nobody wants to come in then. It's once you get in, you're like, and I don't have money, so don't even throw that out there. But once you get in, you're like, this fucking guy has, there's the explicit already. I'm, I'm knocking explicits off early and often anymore. Um, this fucking guy has a ton of money wrapped into this wrestling and sports apparel stuff that you're like, holy shit. Like, I don't want to see my paneling or my walls. Clearly in studio, you know that's happening. Oh, yeah. You don't even know there's any, it's just walls of memorabilia. Yeah. Fantastic. Which leads me to, now that you just said that, uh, of, of course, memorabilia and 8x10s, I have two titles that I can hang that are autographed as well. I, sh- I should not start collecting those. There's a couple belts I do want, and at some point, uh, you know, the, the Owen Hart title I'd like to have, the NWA original red TV title, I'd like to have those. They don't need to be autographed. Maybe I hang my belts in that hall because you can get those hangers that hang straight up and oh. down. I was just thinking that. That might be a best best bet, put the titles in the hall. But then that's really dedicating the hall to titles. And Well, here's the thing. It's inside the main entrance. So they're going to see gold as soon as they look in the window. So is that taunting? Oh, and that is to get taunting. People- yeah, see, so maybe keep those in the office somewhere and move the pictures out there. That's a whole weekend of moving stuff again. I know. It'll yeah, happen. No, you, you don't. You're, you're bored now, right? No. no, there's no soccer. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not bored now. Tell you why I'm not bored, and then we'll get to what happened last night, and then we'll cover. I, I would imagine we'll glaze over Raw and SmackDown because there's only really two things that happened in total, and start with SummerSlam. Um, after I did my rearranging of the house, I had some time before this said interview that I did last night, I bought a new game for the PlayStation five. Oh, well, I bought, I bought two. I pre, I pre-ordered Madden. Okay. So the cheap edition of Madden, I pre-ordered it. It's set to go. I almost pulled the trigger on pre-ordering FIFA that comes out in like November. I'm like, Holy shit, Mark, that's the, you have time to pre-order it. Settle down. (laughs) Because the World Cup teams are on it, both men and women. So, oh, they are. Oh, I so, didn't know that. Okay. That yeah. So clearly, I need it for my girl Kelly O'Hara and Megan Rapino and those. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been wanting a simulator game for a while. Besides the hunting one, I pulled the trigger and I had to write it down because this, it, to me, it's just going to be called Police Simulator. Is this farming simulator for SummerSlam? No. No. <laughs> I think you need to get one now. I think I do too. <laughs> I bought Autobahn Police Simulator. Really? I did. It is. The driving is uh, worse than like Mario Kart 1 driving. <laughs> and I'm, you have to work your way up the ranks. So I'm only okay. like a, a patrol officer right now. I can pull people over, check their cars, see if they have drugs or if their lights are out. Or, you know, you do all these checks. Dude, it's fucking fun. I'm stuck on a mission right now where there's an accident. I can't get the cows off the road. You can't get the cows <laughs> off the road. <laughs> so what kind of... What, come on, man. What, what's holding you up here? <laughs> I, they won't move. I'm petting them and everything. They won't They won't move. <laughs> so I, I, I hope I can get on YouTube and figure out how the hell to do that. Like, mission one, Mark can't do. But... Otherwise, I'm aborting that mission and it's going pulling people over left and right. Hey, your your headlights out. I don't give warnings. Go fuck yourself. You're getting a fine. <laughs> they have, I just, they I have not given me a gun that. yet, so I wonder why You're just pulling people over. Um, I had to pull this up because I had to see some images of this. Uh, this looks ridiculous. I've not seen the cow one yet, but this is <laughs> yeah, this is something else. Like I've seen the GTA. I think it's online or it's a mod where you can be a cop and you can chase people and all that. But I'm right. assuming that's nowhere close to what that is. This seems more straightforward, more you're just pulling people over or you're yeah. just doing normal cop stuff at this point, like moving cows. And Yep. Yeah. 
It's oh fun. It it's one of those games like you know how I get on sports games. I need to win nine hundred to nothing, or I have to win every title real quick, or I have to you know perfect games or whatever. Yeah. Or even on hunting, I. I I think it was okay for a while of just going out killing stuff. Now I'm all about getting diamonds and using the right guns and everything. So I slowly progress that way into games. But this is just being, this is my relaxation. After a rough day at work, I'm going to come home and be a cop. <laughs> bad, <laughs> boys, you, bad boys, bad boys. <laughs> bully, I hope you're listening to bad boys, bad boys as you're pulling people over. It just came into my head right now. Oh my God. You have to download the song now. And, and play it just on repeat off my computer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's my week. Last night, uh, as I as I preface that the English professor's around, so we're doing that. He set up an interview, so he is actually part of this interview that's coming out on Wednesday. Um, we started this interview. We called at eight o'clock. Okay, so essentially, when SummerSlam was starting. Okay. TV in studio, so we had it on. We had it muted. Before we hit the record button, it was 8.45, because we were just catching up with this guy, he, yeah. I, IWC guy, um, John knows him from, I don't know, Miss Martial Arts or Taekwondo or Jiu Jitsu or something. So he asked, do you want to come on the show? Yeah, I'd like if you're going to be there too, we kind of have each other, that personality thing, the personal thing, da, 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 cool, fine and dandy. Um, so we talked 45 minutes before we hit the record button. Then we recorded two hours and 15 minutes. Wow. And it was, you could, there was no pause that I'm like, Hey man, let's stop for, uh, part two. And, and he still has stories about shit that he was in Japan when uh, went on over there. I'm not releasing anything. Just make sure you listen to Wednesday, put time aside <laughs> and do not allow children in the room. It will be tagged explicit for a reason. <laughs> it is awesome. I do stop him at two hours and 15 minutes. I'm like, dude, you just talked through a pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> we need to pause and rekindle or reconnect later. Rekindle is not even a word. Yeah, it is a, it is a word, but it's not what I meant. Uh, reconnect later on for part two to hear some of these other gruesome outlandish stories that are out there so that's going to get set up he'll be back uh whatever it's it's glenn specter from iwc make sure you listen on wednesday again no kids it is explicit for a reason there's times that it's explicit i mark it just because sometimes we let it slip and we don't know oh no yeah. this is explicit for a reason <laughs> But you have – we're dying laughing the whole time. He – Glenn pretty much runs the, the show. We, we're there to listen and enjoy. It's one of those interviews. Educational, stupid, funny, all of that in one. Awesome. <sighs> On that note, though, we hang up, and it's the, I don't know, second to last match. Yeah. We then proceed to talk more off of air about setting it up. And it, literally, we hung up. At the end of the pay-per-view. Oh, my God. So, Mark, then, watched a pay-per-view with no sound. That actually sucks, by the oh, way. I believe it. It really, because you know what's going on, but the commentary is the life of wrestling, right? Yeah. All right, cool, fine and dandy. I was going to watch it again last night. The replay was not on right off the bat. That sucks. So Mark says, okay, because there's some editing things that we had to take care of. I then edit until 1.30 this morning because I didn't want to trust the save button last night mm, without okay. it being edited. Not that it's ever done it, but I'm like, I need to edit this. Yeah. So I'm editing, I'm editing, I'm editing. I was going to watch as I'm editing. Get it's two hours and 14 minutes of stuff I have to edit. Yeah. Cool. So I'm like, well, I have notes for it. I saw what's going on. I'll be able to run through it. Dogs woke me up 5 o'clock this morning to go outside. Well, I got time. 
So I put <laughs> SummerSlam right back on, and I watched this three hours and 45 minutes of SummerSlam all over again. Essentially not watching it, just listening to it this time, right. because I'm doing dishes, but it's so loud that, you know, I'm just, you can I it. know what's going on visually, but I need to get my notes from the commentary. Mm-hmm. I don't think I needed a lot of notes. From, there was some, but I don't think I needed a lot from this commentary. So you can watch a pay-per-view without sound and get the gist of it. I don't suggest it, but this might have been one. Yeah, you might have been able to. I will say the first tag titles and the last match. Oh, you I needed it. You needed it. Yeah. Because it made a lot of what happened in those. In the middle, it kind of slacked a little bit. I think the commentary helped. We can get into this later, but I think the commentary helped Corbin in McAfee's match, bar none. Yeah. But outside of that, I, I would agree. It didn't really add much to them to the other matches in that. So I agree with that. That was bold. I don't know. I don't know if I could handle without getting too much into SummerSlam right now, watching some of the things unfolding while doing a podcast. So I tip my hat to you, sir, because I would have been losing my shit. I did at, at one point in the interview because we were still recording when this thing happened. And it wasn't a match. I about threw up on air, and he's like, "What's wrong?" And I said, "What happened during." The, the SummerSlam. And we'll get to it. There's your shot. We'll get to it. Uh, so I'm a little tired. Um, yeah. The air conditioning and everything on. You can tell Mark's tired because I have a hoodie on. I have a hat on. I'm just like, I'm here today. <laughs> but I'm here in a good mood. That's good. So I want, it, I want to go to this party, but I really need to get home for two reasons tonight. I want to spend some more time on the Autobahn. <laughs> taking care of my business. And I'll ask you, Jenks, and there's probably all, we might cover it more next week. Are you thinking about watching Ric Flair's last match again tonight? <laughs> I've been toying with it uh, again tonight. Uh, I've been toying with it. This was number three, right? I think um, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm toying with it. I will say if I would buy it, if I do buy it, it would not be for Ric Flair's last match. Because the undercard itself is phenomenal. Stellar. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It's stellar. Don't get me wrong. It will be, but here, well, I can't even say that because this is the third one. So, although we're pretty sure this is going to be the last one, it's still. We would hope. We would hope, and not in any in satanistic, you know, that he dies yeah, in the ring or anything tonight. But, dude, you're seventy three, three, four, yeah, yeah whatever. Off, yeah. I can't imagine he's going to be doing much of anything in the match. That's why it's a tag match. That's why I, even if I don't watch it, I'm going to predict Andrade and Jay Lethal produce 95% of this match. Uh, Jeff Jarrett could probably go a little bit, but not Ric Flair go. So, no. no. We'll see. What about you? That's the part you're touring with, right? I really am. Yeah. Like, I, I think if it is on. There'll be like subtle notes next week, and it'll be watched via computer on fight compared to yeah. buying on a TV, so I can play and watch it essentially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, so it's been a good week. It's it's uh yeah. By oh by the way, big announcement, guys. Um, Mark screwed the pooch, and we we talked about it last show, which essentially for us was like a. a a week and a couple days. Um, we are switching to Saturdays. So you're listening. Make sure you keep your eye. Uh, we'll be released Saturdays. Um, you guys won't know when we're recording because it'll be Friday night at 6 o'clock. But uh, essentially, the show is going to start coming out on Saturdays. And I think it helps both of us. It gives us that day yeah. of yeah. maybe family or friends or video games or whatever and just really – disconnect that's what i'm going to use sundays for anymore yeah so i i would agree with that um if i do anything on sundays it'll probably be for the 40 year but that's like an hour out of the day and we usually do a butt crack butt crack at dawn or late at night so it's not even too it, bad yeah so it's not it's not imposing posing on anything but yeah i like i think we like that friday night show too much afterwards we got 
breaking news. Well, maybe yeah. we're just we're just so excited because we got breaking news right beforehand, and we had shit to talk about. But the drinking, the camaraderie, I loved it. I loved all the, everything about it. So I think it went. I think it'll be a good show for yeah. everyone. Yeah. Uh, by the way, speaking of drinking, um, I got the new Spike lemonades. Did I tell? Oh. Did I send you this? Yeah, the watermelon one from uh, Simply, right? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, they're dangerous. I have now had all four flavors. Watermelon is my favorite. It literally is a watermelon Jolly Rancher. You don't get a ton of that. Uh, and I, I love lemonade, like fresh squeezed lemonade, but you don't get that, the tart, the sweet, that you just get that nice um, watermelon Jolly Rancher. The blueberry, there's a lot of blueberry in it. It's still good. It's not overpowering with lemonade either. Even this, the lemonade, lemonade is subtle. Um, I didn't like the strawberry. I mean, it was yeah. good, but it was the worst of the four. Something's got to be the worst, right? Right. And the yeah. strawberry, the strawberry was. Which makes sense. Oh, man, you sent that to me Friday night. I'm like, oh, buddy, that but looked really good. They go down. They are a guzzling drink compared that- to... That's the danger of them. Yeah. Because they can go down smooth. There's beers out there that are 7 8%, but they go down so smooth and so easily, you yeah. lose yourself. And that's the classic definition of dangerous because yep. you're blacked out by 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, hot topics in wrestling this week. Didn't get a lot of Vince stuff no. this week, which, okay, good. I think it was probably needed. I don't think we got a lot of anything in Hot Topics. No, I think the only thing, the two things of note, I mean, the Vince thing, we found out that he didn't document the $14 million that he was supposed to, which is a huge, huge thing. So that exactly explains why he retired, quote unquote, was because of that. Bailey agrees, obviously. She's not, she's not obeying the sign outside that says I'm on air. <laughs> right. So she is not doing her job here. I got to train her better. First day. Uh, it's first, yeah, day. first day. First day. The thing's lit up. At least look at it. But anyway, <laughs> as if she can see colors. Uh, but the second thing coming out of it, Monday, Triple H is in charge of creative, which I thought was, the, I think that was the only other big thing this week was, and we saw that, I think, at SummerSlam. I think a lot of it dictated what we saw with Triple H. I think we I think we first saw it on SmackDown because they said agree, yeah. that Raw was still essentially written prior to Sorry. retirement and everything. So Vince's hand is still on Raw. But yeah. I think you really saw it on SmackDown. Yes. So Ag- Yep, agreed. And then last night the show Oh, for sure. It was definitely Triple H. Uh Every element, even the commentary, my God, they were naming wrestling moves and referees. I was losing my shit at that. I popped for when they named Chad Patton and Charles I, Robinson. I know. I was like, what? We're naming referees now? It warms this cold, dead heart that is slightly thawed, but it's finally good. But, yeah. Yeah, so I am actually, there's that little spark. There's that little spark that you're like, oh, damn. Now I gotta watch. Is <laughs> is, is the juggernaut, come, because come on, I mean... Is the juggernaut coming back? And yeah. it it can. It, we'll get there. But let's take care of the crap, and then we'll dive right into SummerSlam. Uh, well, let yeah. no. Let's do Raw and SmackDown right now. All right, let's do it. So you're, uh, running, you're running this shindig. What are we doing here? I don't know. <laughs> I, I just because Raw and SmackDown is going to be quick, and then we can do everything. Yeah. That's good. Um, I I hated the twenty years of Ray. It seemed forced. It Isn't really it? did. Yeah. It's exactly, I'm like, man. I mean, they brought up names. Malenko and Conan and Batista and Angle and Edge and uh, Eddie always. I mean, but yeah. there's some other names that they have never mentioned in a long time. So I'm like, okay, okay. But, yeah, I don't, he didn't look comfortable out there. No, he didn't. It. It, it seemed forced. It seemed like a afterthought that we're acknowledging it. Obviously, they've built it up for a couple weeks, not too many weeks, but a couple. But let's be honest, 20 years of Ray, it's only been in WWE. This doesn't even cover his extensive career. And some of the people they named were before the WWE career. So it didn't even make sense in that aspect of when you think Malenko, Conan. Uh-oh, what just happened there? She knocked down the sign, didn't she? 
I don't know. I'm going to go check. I'll be right back. Okay, you go check that sign. So as Jenks checks that sign to see what goes on. Uh, other things, and, and I'll loop back around when he gets back on air. Um, it, it was promo heavy. It really was promo heavy for, you know, it's a, it's a raw go-home show, essentially, which, eh. Uh, yeah. It, you, yeah, you heard, you know, it was, it was promo heavy raw go-home show. It was. Well, yeah, it was your typical raw show. By the way, the sign's fine. Um, what was it? We have to let the listeners know what it was. The cord fell down for some reason. I don't know. Maybe I didn't put that up right, so I got to fix that later. But Sticky tape. Sticky tape probably is going to be the case. So, anyways, we're all good. Sign's still up. Uh, <laughs> but, but, yeah, it was a promo heavy show. wasn't anything of substance. I didn't really... I didn't really care for it. I mean, the only thing about the Mysterio thing, again, it was supposed to be Ray's 20 year, but it was what it was. Yeah. So, And then on SmackDown, again, this is essentially where we think Triple H took over the Drew and Sheamus thing. I want to just read some of my notes. Um, okay. First of all, I thought it was just a Shillelagh match last week. That it was maybe not like Shillelagh on a pole, but it was just going to be you can only use Shillelaghs. Then it turns out to be a Donnie Brook. We need Donnie Brooks. That's it. Yeah. One, it's a great word, and two, I, yes, the bar was there. Seamus's uncles, uncles, uncles were pictured there, which good for him. <laughs> um, I like this. I really did. I like this match to start off SmackDown. Should yeah. this have been on? SummerSlam and move something else? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I could pick a couple matches. <laughs> and we will. Yeah, we will. But, yeah, there was this 30-minute long match on SmackDown. It was beautifully done. It was the perfect blow-off match that, you're right, it should have happened at SummerSlam. There was no reason this match shouldn't have happened. And let's, I think, hopefully, maybe with the Triple H era, because obviously he's not... He didn't have full control over SummerSlam's card and the way things fell out. Um, we're going to start seeing these number one contendership matches down the line. These creep into the pay-per-view cards because I think they carry so much weight. Yep. And if we're going to get bangers and great matches like this Donnybrook match, let's get them on the card. Let's get them on the big card and let's get them the spotlight they deserve. Because you took out whether you like Sheamus or not, you took out two of your biggest players off of SummerSlam's card. And all we had for that was Drew showed up to call out Colt and get a Colt chant going for, right. and then call out whoever he wanted. So great news for Colt, but they should have been doing more on the show. So I get it. I love the match. I just think, I just wish they would just take it and put it into SummerSlam and make it the bigger, bigger SummerSlam, the bigger summer event. So uh, agree. Yeah. Um, Sheamus. I, I want to see Sheamus get another run. Like, I'm, for the longest time, I was, uh, about the Brotherhood or whatever the hell they're called, the Brogues or whatever. I still don't know their name. And this is being dead honest. I don't know what the <laughs> hell they call them. Uh, and we were laughing about Butch. It, it's all kind of coming together. But I've always been somewhat of a Sheamus fan. And yeah. he's done a lot of due diligence for WWE. Yeah. Can the guy get something? You know, his last big thing was him and Cesaro is the bar. Yeah. Uh, tag team champs. He's been fluctuating in and out of mid to mid upper. I One more run for him before. I'm not saying he's older or he's going to leave or anything, but I'd like one more time for him to have a title. Yeah. Here's, when I when Sheamus first started, was not a fan. Just didn't like the style, but he's grown over me. And I think Cesaro, the teaming with the bar, teaming with Cesaro, helped that a lot for me to see him in a different light, that he could keep up, he could produce these stellar matches, and he could actually do more. I would agree with you. I've come to a place where Sheamus deserves at least one more shot at the Universal, at the heavyweight. Let him carry it, even if it's for a month, a transition, two months, three months. Give him the run. Because at this point, he's been with the company God 12 14 years now, something like yeah. that, if you think about it. So he definitely deserves a shot at it. And, you know, he's getting up there. So at some point, we're going to lose Seamus here, and we're going to start transitioning away from it. And it's weird to say that. Seamus, Miz, Ray, 
all of these guys are getting up there in age and at some point they're going to have to transition away from the ring and let's give at least Sheamus one more shot at it because I think he can carry a match better than people think he can. So. Well, it, you name Miz, so I think it would be an injustice if Miz doesn't get one more time just to piss the fans off as he's well, go riding out. Piss the fans off, but to give him an actual lengthy title reign. Yeah. I think he needs a lengthy title reign. I don't, and not with money in the bank involved, because that's the only two times he's won it was with money in the bank. So let's give him one where he, he can steal it and piss the fans off even further. But we'll see. Although that might lead to Logan Paul winning the title. So we might need to back off that a little bit. Uh, <laughs> that's not even fucking funny. <laughs> I called it weeks ago, and it happened on Friday, and when we get to SummerSlam, Pat's going to have a match with Corey Graves. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I'm excited for that. One for Corey Graves. I am, too. I thought Graves was going to get involved Saturday night, but it's the writings there. I think you called, did you call Survivor Series or maybe a little bit after that? So it could happen. Or we're just on a slow burn until WrestleMania and something happens in the Rumble between the two and it leads up to a WrestleMania match. I don't know. They both, be, they both get called into the Rumble? They both. I was gonna, I said during, at the beginning of the Corbin McAfee match, I'm like, Pat's in the Rumble next year. So I'm calling it right now. Pat McAfee's going to be in the Rumble. Corey Graves, I don't know if he's in the Rumble or if he costs McAfee the Rumble like pulls McAfee out or does something with Corbin or something like that to get McAfee out that kicks off that storyline. But I'm pretty sure McAfee's going to be in the rumble. Cause what else would you want to do outside of winning titles? You would want to be in a Royal rumble match and just say you were in a rumble match. If you're Pat McAfee. Yeah. In my mind. So I, the opportunities there, he can wrestle, he can do things. So throw him in the match, see what happens. I, I will say this. I know you're a huge Pat fan, and we'll criticize the match when we get to it. I never want to see him with a title. I don't, All right, great. Yeah, yeah, no. I think he's a special attraction. Yeah. I, and that I would say the same thing for Logan Paul. They're more special attraction wrestling matches. Hey, we're here, big name on the pay-per-view, but it's just a one-on-one match, or it's a tag match, or it's something, something along those lines, never with a title. Yeah. The living... Ronda posed down, turned into a tag match, and get ready. Man, Sonya Deville is going to be the one they bury for a while, isn't it? And that that sucks because I've always waved her flag, both of her flags, her yeah. her personal flag, and then her. I I thought she did great stuff in the ring, and now she's she's a joke, and that pisses me off because she was on a huge run before the stalker. Yeah. Like, I mean, the real stalker that corrupted right. her life. Yeah. I I agree with you 100%. I think it's that, okay, we're going to milk this where she's getting beat and she's getting her comeuppance from being a terrible general manager or, like, bad, a heel general manager. I think they're going to milk that for to an extent. Until, until stuff, next money in the bank? Maybe. Or they're just going to milk it until the love appeal behind it falls off. And once it falls off, they can be like, all right, let's build her back up and let's make her this dominant person. The hate's still going to be there, which is going to make for a dynamic heel, but they have to milk her getting loss after loss and getting comeuppance from Ronda and all of that. Um, So I think that's, that's the game plan. Now maybe next money in the bank, we see Sonya Deville with the money in the bank briefcase. And hopefully she holds it for more than five minutes. Or a cup of coffee. Like we, we can get there and yell about that next year when we get to it. But we we said that for this one and it didn't yeah, happen. It didn't happen. Um and then one more thing I have on SmackDown that doesn't pertain to anything essentially on the pay per view that we can rewrap back around. I don't know about the Vikings. Like um uh, I don't like the cosplay that's going on here. I yeah. just want them to be the War like Raider. The, we want the, the fucking War, War Raiders back. We want the War Raiders back. We'll take the NXT version of the War Raiders back, which I think was Vi- wasn't Viking Experience or Viking something or other. But we want that. We want the War Raider esque guys back. 
We're never going to get, well, we might get him now. So mm, yeah, we might, I think we might get him now. Um, but let's lose the shield. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's just get rid of the shield. You're not captain America. You're not captain America. You're not emo Viking over here. Let's just get it back to war Raiders, dominating people, doing amazing things. Would love to see it. But until that happens, eh. Not really excited about it. And how about New Day is basically the bottom of the barrel now. Yeah. And there's, I, a, and there's a former WWE champion on that team. Let's be honest. Kofi's former WWE, but now they're bottom of the barrel. There's also a King of the Ring that we don't acknowledge and anymore either. That we don't acknowledge King Woods anymore. And, yeah. Now he's so, hurt. There's my air quotes for the day. Yeah, hurt. So now we're just going to sit on this for... Do nothing. Yeah, I hate it. But in a in a tag team, I'm going to save this for SummerSlam. But I'll tease it. The tag team division is done. Maybe there's nothing left. Can we there's, wrap it back around? I, what? Who can we get? Who can be elevated now? Honestly, maybe this is what their plan was, or maybe this is what Triple H's thought process was. The bloodline has defeated the challengers up until this point. It feels hopeless, and it feels like there's no tag team people that can step up. Do we even believe in Drew right now? It's raised a lot of questions of who can actually dethrone the bloodline, and maybe that's a good thing leading up to Castle Grayskull. I'm just saying, I may already have my pick in the bag for that match. I would be pissed if it didn't. Like that's yeah. the, that's the whole British Bulldog Exact it's yeah. the whole Bulldog Bret Hart Wembley Stadium yeah. scenario. It's been thirty years since we've had a premium live event over there. You've never had a premium live event over there, by the way. Yeah, it was pay per view. By the way, I was surprised they mentioned that history in the paper. I know, I, right? It near fell out of my chair. But so which I'll get back on that horse of WrestleMania should be in London at some point at Wembley, but that's a whole other story for a whole different time. But let's see what happens at Castle Grayskull. Hopefully it's a roll-up victory because I just want to see like a Bulldog-esque. It's not going to be, but the Bulldog-esque type thing would be kind of fun little throwback for that. But we'll see. All right. Pause, and we'll come back. We'll talk about SummerSlam. We'll do our due diligence here in a second. But Jenks. It's been announced WrestleMania 40 is in Philadelphia, April, I don't know, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 5th, I don't know, whatever. It's going to be fucking cold. It's, it's buy one, get one. <laughs> yeah, it's uh-huh. it's going to be cold. Um, we both are doing a podcast today, so that means we did not win the $1.325 billion. Yeah, uh, although I'd probably need a hobby for to do when I'm retired and just sitting on that lump sum of money. So who knows? Yeah. We did not. We did, we did not buy it from the suburbs of Chicago from what I've read. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, w- I was not in Chicago. I was not. <laughs> I was not either. Uh, right before we came on air, though, I want everybody to uh, check out our Facebook page. And everybody knows I love Chelsea Green. I love Chelsea Green. I don't know if you've seen this yet, Jenks. Um, hell, she's tattooed on my sleeve. Her lips and yeah. her autograph are on me. That's how much I love Chelsea Green. But, Chelsea, you're listening right now. You have hate against the Macho Man Slim Jim. I saw that. Like, Cardona Ooh. Cardona bought one of those old school Slim Jim. Yeah. And he has it in the house, and she just looks disgusted at him. She has Cardona heat against that yeah. whole freaking Slim Jim pack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Chelsea. You know better. You know embrace better. Embrace it. Embrace the Macho Man. That's all it is. I would put one. Them. Maybe that's what I need to start collecting, like cardboard cut. I don't know. Do uh, <laughs> you need company in the, uh, in the uh, recording area. And, uh, the, enough of these faces just aren't staring at me. <laughs> don't you want life-size cutouts just standing with you? Of so many, but that's a different <laughs> subject. <laughs> Collar and Elbow, that's what he sees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and the hooligans have at CollarandElbowWrestling.com. Make sure you check them out. Quick promo code, it's Can Crushers, capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers, you'll save 10%. 
wherever you're listening now, we're on that platform. But we're also on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and the list can go on. Subscribe to all of them, like all of them, give us ratings on all of them, tell your friends about all of them, spread the wealth of Can Crushers, that would be awesome. Socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Farmers Only, now definitely on Farmers Only, because I need a tractor. <laughs> Aliens in the light, birds that have right. radar in them. Uh, Birdsaredrones.com. Yeah. There's a, whole, there's a whole website dedicated to you. Uh, merchandise around that by the way too we found that out the other day we can get you a shirt that tells you the different types of drones Surveillance really drones, sanitation drones yeah well i know sanitation drones i was never supposed to release that one yeah well it's out there now need those they might be coming for you now damn it <laughs> damn it uh find us everywhere and if you want to be part of a show, if your talent, anything involved in wrestling, uh, shoot us an email at cancrushers69 at gmail.com. I would believe in maybe a month or two, so uh, just a forewarning, because there's going to be a lot of dead time between now and Royal Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> we have Castle Grayskull. What are you talking about? Maybe Castle Grayskull will be all right, but... Anything after that until Rumble is definitely unless unless Trips is going to change it up to rebuild the brand. Yeah. Um. Hopefully, it's five on five of Survivor Series with I like hope, a captain picking teams. I'm praying to God there's not a draft going on at that time, or captains picking teams would be fine by me because you don't have to worry about brand on brand supremacy with the people that used to be on Raw. Yeah, the week before. Yeah, week before, yeah. So, so I'd be fine with Captain picking team. All right, guys, here comes Al Snow. Tell you more about Collar and Elbow. We come back. We'll deep dive into SummerSlam. Um, remember, I watched it twice so far within fucking 12 hours. I've only watched it once. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand a brand founded on the aspects of wrestling two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere collar and elbow is the brand passion and love for wrestling is the drive I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. What's up, guys? My name is Keikoa, the Hawaiian Warrior, and you are listening to Ken. What? Hang on a second. I got to stop this. I'm looking at my. I'm looking at my cue card that Mark handed me. It says I have to do this '80s promo style. So if you're li- if you're tuning in. This is the Can Crusher Podcast, the only podcast that you should be listening to for all your professional and independent wrestling content. So make sure you tune in every single time that they post a new episode. Hit that subscribe button and listen to the Can Crusher Podcast, brother. Now that is a great ass promo. Right? That's all I'm saying. That is fucking great. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, I... Uh... The note cards, man. You have to send them the note cards, and, and they're good. They they believe everything you tell them on a note card. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Just yeah, note cards, little incentive with it. You know, it's all good. <laughs> Guys, if you've not listened to Keikoa's spotlight that was up last Wednesday, make sure you go back and listen to it. He, let me say, Jenks, I don't know if you listened to it, but if you didn't, I'm still going to, or if you did, I'm going to still name drop. He brings up Max Moon, Skinner, Outback Jack, people like that in his spotlight. It's magnificent. That's right. all. I'm, all I'm gonna say. Right, it's magnificent. Yeah. <laughs> that those are names that don't get brought up a lot on Can Crushers or yeah, Spotlights. So yeah. uh, find out why we're talking about them. And uh, I was creepy. I, I I I had apologized at the end. I'm like, dude, I the way that I said a few things. Because I knew of them from going to MCW for a while with Pat and those guys. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't want to say I forgot. But then I saw him on TikTok with his daughter doing, like, some challenges and stuff. And wrestlers with their kids is uh, 
it's a dad moment. It's a, it's, it tugs at your, your strings. Right, and I'm like, son of a bitch, I need to get him on the show just to tell him how much I love his daughter, which is three, which is, it almost sounds weird <laughs> or some, weird. somewhere around three or something like that. I'm like, oh, God, I sound like a weirdo. Yeah. But we also talk about Moana and our favorite Disney cartoons. Yeah. It's, it's it, it, the, it's it encompasses all everything. It's all over the map. So listen if you haven't yet. Yeah, if you can <laughs> talk about Outback Jack, Max Moon, and Moana and Elsa in one podcast, you might be doing something right. <laughs> You've reached the pinnacle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> SummerSlam. Jenks, I was playing my Audubon game, and for a moment I thought, holy shit, the, the pre-show – is only half an hour long. I I don't know. I, I legit lost. T- I was on the Autobahn, man. I, yeah. <laughs> and then we rolled into the interview that you guys heard about. So SummerSlam, the first time around to me, wasn't three hours. Wasn't three and a half mm-hmm. hours. It was quick because I was entertained other ways. Yeah. This morning, again, like I said, differently. But we start with Becky and Bianca. We both thought... And just to uh, preface this a little bit, we are going to get a 26-second match, possibly, so. yeah. to really cap this off. And it did need capped off. Mm-hmm. It did, but it didn't get capped off in this whole storyline of these two. But yeah. before we get to the ending, I thought this was, I'll tell you, we've seen this start pay-per-views before. They know that these two are money. To have them start the pay per views, I this is probably match wise and not shenanigan wise. This is probably my favorite match. Agreed, I absolutely agree, and by far my favorite match oh, of the night. Yeah, everything involved in that match, I popped so much during this match. This was. This might have been my favorite match between the two, and I thought WrestleMania was going to be hard to top. I really thought that. And for reference, guys, I'm just coming off. I think I stopped watching about 10 minutes before we started recording or even getting on this. So I literally got it done by the time frame. But, Mark, this was so good. I was jumping out of the chair when I started watching this at 6 o'clock this morning. I was up and moving. Um, The ending... Not not this, anything after the match. The ending of the match, the Spanish fly popped me so hard yes. because I did not expect that to happen at all. And when it happened, I was like, oh, shit, Spanish fly. And then the end, and I'm like, holy shit, what the fuck just happened? It, I love this match. I loved everything about it. And for me, until probably Uso Street Profits brought it back up, but they were still too far away. I'm wishing what Bex and Bianca did at the end of at the beginning of the night. It was beautifully done. Get the crowd off to a hot start. They picked the absolute perfect match to do that. Did you think during the match at all? And I know we had our winners. We both said uh, Bianca was going to win. By the way, did you think? Oh shit, Bex is getting it back. I thought so. I did there was too. A couple times. There was a couple times. I'm like, are they going to give it back to her? And I think after, even if they would have gave it back in, to her, that match itself, I think I would have been fine with. Shock? Yeah. But I would have been fine with because, okay, we're continuing this and we're keeping this going, but now we have a relit fire underneath it. It's reinvigorated with something. So I was surprised with it. Go for I it. thought we were going to end up with a double turn at some point during this match. There were so many heel tendencies from Bianca leading up to this, but in this match too, Yeah, that I would not have been surprised if that happened. We only got the one turn as it turns out, but that was I could have seen that definitely happening. Bianca's turning heel at some point. Agreed. I don't know when, but she will turn heel at some point. And maybe it will be on Becky or something. I don't know, but at some point, Bianca's got to turn heel because I want to see them explore this heel side of Bianca because I think she would be perfect at it. I agree. And I think it links into the tag team match down the line as well. And again, yep. in about half an hour, we'll probably get there. 
So after the match, they shake hands. Uh, reports, and I, I just reading headlines and everything, Becky possibly pulled something a little bit injured. Um, whatever, whatever. I don't know. I really didn't look into it because I had to watch it again for the second time this morning. I'm going to beat the dead horse on that. So I really didn't read reports this morning. But a possible injury to Becky is lingering out there. Don't know. So Bex is out of the ring. Ding dong! Hello. She walks out. I nearly lost it. I was excited just for that. Yeah. One, because yeah. we're huge Bailey fans. Both of us love Bailey. Christ, you named your dog after it. The dog is named and spelled after it. Right. Um, yeah. But also off of that, it's been over a year. And we've been sitting, we've known she's been healthy for what, three, four, five months, something like that. We were like, where is she? Where's Bailey? When's she coming back? What are they doing with her? But it's the perfect point to bring her back in as that next challenger for Bianca. Which now, after events unfold... Go ahead. No, more, dude, no, no, I was going to say, after... Well, I don't want to say it yet because I want to make this point first. But after the events that unfold makes her an even more legitimate and possibly taking that title at Castle Grayskull, if that's where they're going to do the match at. I think everything that transpired after that puts it directly in line, and I think it's a legitimate not, oh, next one up, next one knocked down. I think Bailey might take it in a month. I hope so. I, I it, it, It's not because of the love of Bailey that we have, and it's yeah. not because I hate Bianca. I think there there is a money pit for these two. Yeah. I think it be I really think it can be great. I want to let it fester for a little bit before we give everything that we think, but I I just I really think that this could be carried over to Mania. Yeah. And there's your money and if Bianca gets another main event of Mania whatever, but I think it's yeah. I think I completely agree with you. I think this is the next long-term booking for Bianca and it's perfect. The history is there. Everything is there. You don't need anything. You just need these two women to go at it. And I think if Bianca has to work her way back up to Bailey, bar none, that's going to be the best thing for her. So I think this is this is great. Bailey stands, and then we hear Dakota Kai's music. I jumped. I want to I want to wrap around to everybody because one more person comes out as well. But once Kai comes out, I'm like. Holy fuck! That's how I didn't know you were doing. How you could do a podcast during that? Because I audibly said, "Are you fucking kidding me?" She was released four months ago months or something. Ago, like, yeah, and she was comes waltzing out on the biggest stage of the summer SummerSlam to align herself with Bailey. Like I didn't real, I didn't know if it was aligning with Bailey at first, but when she did, I'm like, holy. shit. Shit. Those two alone, powerhouse. Yeah, powerhouse bar none. My underappreciated, underrated Dakota Kai finally back. Just a powerhouse group that I think would have solidified a title one for Bailey at some point. Right. Yeah. And she looks. She always looks good. But I'm glad she lost the whatever you know the, the tights or whatever. She probably is going to wear something like that. But she comes out. In like badass gear, the ripped yep. jeans, the big boots, the you know, and I'm like, D- this is the look. This is like, a, a, get ready, the the runaway. The and I'm not saying Ruby Soho, but like right. the the Ruby and like Liv kind of met together, you know, because there's a little yeah. pink strip and everything. There's just that congregation. That's not the right word, but that's what I'm using uh, of that look. And I'm like, she just looks like a different person. And I'm like, yeah. fuck. So I, as much as I marked for Bailey during the interview in my head, I was more thrilled to see Dakota back. Agreed. Because that was the biggest, one of the bigger mistakes during the releases of summer 2022. There was a lot of them. <laughs> right. That was one of the bigger ones, I think. And then the third person comes waltzing out. And it says Io Shirai. Corey Graves is calling her Io Sky. 
uh, Cole's calling her Shira. I don't know if she changed her name or if Grey is the same because she was she was Skywalker or something like that. I don't. Yeah, she said she was. Uh, I can't remember what they called her when she first came back, but she was basically the ninja of the sky, the right. fly. She was a flying. Uh, you could call her a flying demon at that point because she was just so. She's Ariel. Uh, you guys know Ariel Shirai. Yeah. So you know exactly what we're. Getting you don't at. know what we're trying to say, but you understand. We're just a couple guys babbling on three hours of sleep. Don't. <laughs> but. Fucking A, man, I lost my shit for EO because we haven't seen her in a, several months. And it's and, been saying that she's ready to tap out at WWE. Exactly, because she wasn't, she thought she was going to get up to the main roster. Her goal was to get to the main roster. Like yesterday. Not like yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, a long time like ago yesterday. Last year, yeah. three years ago. And she should have been, rightfully so, but they finally bring her back. And I saw reports that this group was pitched five months ago or something like that. And they nixed it. It got rejected by Vince. And I'm like, how do you not see dollar signs over this group? This is a legitimate group of talented female competitors that, holy shit, Bailey's leading this now? Oh, man. So it's nixed five months ago. Yeah. Uh, Vince retires last week. We're just rounding. Last week. What does Triple H do? Because Kai's not on your roster. Shirai's lingering about moving back. Right. Fuck America. I'm out of here. What? She's still on the roster, though. So you say, hey, come SummerSlam. I'll take I'll take care of your shit. Da, 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 da. How do you call Kai? How, would it, hey, remember what you and Bailey and EO said five months ago? You know, Vince isn't here. I want to do it. How? Like, I don't know. These are all unanswered questions. I get it. I got to think. Dakota Kai was the first call, trip, one of the first calls Triple H made Sunday. Or not Sunday, Monday. Friday morning. Saying, Friday, Friday at 4 05. Friday morning when he was the EVP of talent. But I think maybe, I think Monday when he got in charge of creative. Because at that point, he can bring in the talent and tell them, this is exactly what you're going to do. And this is the plan ahead. That must have been money signed for her because she hadn't signed anywhere. She wasn't really, she wasn't doing anything besides Twitch streaming, which is fine. Take your time off, recoup. Probably a big shock to her. She got released, but he's sitting there like, I know you're available. You want to come back and do this and be on the main roster? Like money. Just she, I would have jumped at that opportunity knowing that there's a direction forward for her as a professional wrestler. I like that they brought Bailey out first. Yes. I would have brought EO out second. Okay. Seeing that everybody knows she's still on the roster. Right. I do think Dakota got the bigger pop out of all of them. Yeah. But I w- if there was a huge surprise, that's, I would have brought Dakota out last. That, I, it's I, just in my head. I agree with that. I think they went... I don't know what they did because I would agree with you. Go Dakota last because that's the one people are not expecting. EO probably not expecting because I don't, I don't I've never heard the report that they pitched this idea of them being together before this. EO's on the roster, so if EO comes out, there's a pop and she's called up to NXT. Great, fantastic. But to your point, yeah, Dakota Kai not on the roster, not on anybody's radar to walk out, especially with Bailey and EO right at SummerSlam. Oh. Money, to your point, biggest pop of the three. And then they get in the ring, and I'm glad there was no scuffling. Yeah. But Be- uh, Becky does step back in the ring for this turn. I thought Bex was still going to blast Bianca for a quick second. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. But I also was not leaning towards the blast, the pop to the face on Bianca because of the handshake. That seemed so out of character from what we've seen over the past five months from Bex that, okay, we know it's the show camaraderie or whatever, but right. you don't see that thing that right. often without some sort of person just decking the other person and knocking them out. So I was hesitant towards that at that interaction because I thought, oh, she's going to do anything. She's going to do it now. She never did it. So I was like, okay, maybe we're on good terms, but it's still uneasy. Tenure is Becky – face i don't know about the injury angle she did do something to her arm because i think her arm was legitimately injured in that match but we'll have to see how all of that plays out hopefully it's nothing too bad so match number one six everything that call for six yeah 
That's a chuck six a, pack. Chuck a six pack. You're you're off to a good start. Match number two, Logan against Miz. Um Man Misuse of Champa. Misuse of yeah. Champa. And even though I know Maurice isn't active anymore or anything, she does nothing. Nothing. Oh. All she was there, and I don't, I'm not being sexist or anything, just to have her ass on TV. Like that, she, even when she was distracting the referee, she was distracting herself. I was, I think, maybe this is just me wishful thinking. If you're going to use Tampa in that capacity, if you're going to have AJ Styles come out during that match, just give Tampa and AJ a match and just take him out of that whole scenario, have him have a match later on in the night. I think Maurice could have done what Tampa did in the match because she's done it before. Yeah. She's done it several times before. For God's sake, she's carrying out a ball purse. <laughs> Hit him with it. Right. Hit Logan Paul with it a couple of times. Whip him with it. Do something with it. I, I agree with you. I think it was just a misuse of Tampa, but I think it's a misuse of Maurice too, because oh, yeah. she could, she can do a lot more than they let her do last night. And it, granted, they were giving Tampa that time to kind of step in and be up there. I got to believe after tonight, Miz and Tampa are separating. Good. Good. I, I think with Triple H in charge, Tampa is going to get his own run or get his own thing going. At can we some get point. his mean streak back? I get get away from streak? colored pants? Yes. I want his mean streak. I want him to chase a new goalie. I want it all. Tampa needs to go back to being Tampa, and I will be happy camper. Maybe maybe things, events on Monday will transpire to help that along, but we'll see. Logan's athletic is all hell. Man, he, he really is. I'm not going to take anything away from yeah. him. I don't know, though. This was this was a raw main event match for me. Like It, it didn't do anything. Well, it was perfect as number two. Oh, yeah. Perfect the popcorn match. match. Yeah, yeah, the popcorn match. Go get go to the bathroom. You had the big blow off. Let's take a breath. Logan Paul is very athletic. And honestly, he's better than I thought he would be in WWE ring. So Sing- yeah, because back. we didn't see him singles. So to see him singles, right. Carried his own. So I'll give him credit for that. Yeah, I Raw main event. I didn't really care for this match anyways. I knew it was com- – we knew it was coming after the tournament mania. So – yeah, it and, was what it was, and we both picked Logan to win, so we're, we we're there. Um, yeah, so that's kind of our. Do you have anything else to say about it? No, nothing else. Yeah, nothing. Oh, oh, by the way, I did love the uh, graded card that Miz had. I'll give him props for that. That was that was a nice little touch. But yeah, yeah, touche. <laughs> uh, next up was Theory against Ball. Oh, oh. oh, what are you giving that one? Mere wise, two and a half. I was going to give it three. Oh, well, all right, so we're there. Yeah, yeah. I normally say we don't give half beers, but I was just, you know how I, I am. I do half beers just piss you off. That's well, that's why. I mean. <laughs> so if we're going to go, we'll go three. We'll go three. We'll go three. All yeah. right, fine and dandy. Uh, U.S. title match, I mean, come on. Um, the writing was on the wall. Once he was getting a title shot, I thought there was no chance in hell. Uh, that wasn't even spent. That meant that way. Uh, there was no chance that he was going to well, get the US. not there anymore. Yeah. So it was. Yeah. There was no. <laughs> he wasn't getting the title back. We both picked Bob to win this. Um, so we're three for three so far. I was shocked. Be prepared. That it lasted as long as it did. I was too. I thought it. It should have ended earlier. I thought it was going to be a six minute match. Yeah. It did uh, nothing for either of them. I, I don't mean it mean against Bob or anything. It did nothing. Well, it just needed to die. The, the rivalry needed to die. Yeah. And that's all it was. And you're right. It did nothing for either of them. Got him on the show, which is great. But I was I was literally not paying attention too much after this match. Both times I was not. Yeah. I would have wanted, though, a beatdown of yeah. theory. So that question is, is he going to be able to come back out? He got the, the full Nelson on him. He tapped instantly. Yeah. Which instantly told me, well, he'll be out during the main event. I mean, he, he said it, but at least give me suspense that day. You know, have Bob win and just decimate him one more time. Give him a power bomb that he needs not 
carted out or anything, but just he's limping out or something. Yeah. It it gave well, away later. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, I wanted, I thought it would be a squash because I thought after Theory hit him, and this is when the thought popped in my head, it was going to be a very quick match. Theory hit him with the briefcase. I thought Bob was going to go full rage mode and just plow him over. So to give Theory a shot in this, I guess I understand it. But at the same time, I'm like, dudes, just have him get run over, get it out of the way. Because that's how all these money in the banks work sometimes is when they, they go through a grueling match, they lose. Unless it's the women, they just cash in later that night. It's they lose and something happens that you forget about them and be like, oh, they're written off into the sunset. They're not going to come back out. Yep. And then all of a sudden, here they come out and win the match for it. And, well, try to win the match for it, but I don't know. The match I could have given two shits about the whole night is the Judgment Day against the Mysterios. No, yeah. D- no DQ match. Um, And I know for probably weeks I- I've been wanting to talk about this. Man, I just can't get it. These are the notes. I'm going to read them verbatim. Man, I just cannot get into Judgment Day anymore. I know it's been a while since they turned on Edge, but I can't picture any of them being a leader. I just don't know. I want more of a, a Dom turn out of this match because I think Dom has lost anything from when he came in as you know the youngster with his sister and everything. Yep. I think he lost it all. The biggest thing I liked was the Brood-esque entrance by edge mm-hmm. but they ruined edge in this match to me as well if this is no dq and everybody has done everything on the outside of the ring ripley was beating people up this that and the other thing you want edge to get back over with this big return why not spear finn or priest and have one of them pick up the win edge did spear them then we had to get the 619 and yeah. then Ray's splash. Yeah. That essentially tells me that Edge's spear meant nothing in this match. Yeah. Except he returned and he's coming for them now. Yeah. I completely agree. Uh, I also could not get over the fact that they had to start tagging in halfway through the match. I, right? Get into the match. Why? 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 Like, I thought, okay, we got tech, tornado tag, no DQ. We're fighting all over the place. Fantastic. This is going to be good. And then all of a sudden they stop and they're on the outside on the aprons. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Why? I would be going in there running in or just kicking the shit out of somebody. Like, it didn't make absolutely any sense to me about it. You're right. Dom's lost everything. I think he needs to He needs to join Judgment Day. I have a note about this, but it's outside of this match about Judgment Day and what I want with it. But I'll get to it after we get through the match. I'm through the match, so you can go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll get through my notes then. But, like, I broke down Dom needs to join Judgment Day. Maybe that'll happen tomorrow. Um, I wanted it to happen at SummerSlam because I think that would have helped elevate them a little bit more. And then we could have got Edge's return on Monday. Personally, that's me. You're right, man. Why did we need to do 619 after the spear and all that? Why, why are we doing all this? It just seemed like a waste of the spear. It's the way they went through it. Uh, props to Rhea throwing people around like the big-ass bodyguard she is, and I mean that in the most endearing terms possible. She's strong, and she can throw people around, so good for her. Outside of the match, my hope now, because we heard rumors that they want a judgment day to be more paranormal or more like, uh, you know, more like that aspect. Mark, when... I thought about it during the match, and I'm like, they should make Judgment Day worship the demon persona of Finn Balor. That aspect of it, if they gave them that purpose, I think it would put them in a better position and be actually better. Because now they're serving a demon Yes. at that aspect. That's their leader, is the demon Finn Balor. And he has to come out on special occasions and do the bidding for the group. But they have to worship a being. And I want it to be the demon from Bella. That's kind of where my head went. What do you think about that? I being love it. Preferable leader? Because it's, almost, it's that supernatural. I'm not saying. Well, I guess I am saying it's kind of like a godlike 
being that they worship and they cult following. Yep. I think they could. It makes sense that. because what what are they what are they doing right now? Exactly. They're doing nothing. There's nothing there's there's no point to it. It was fodder for Rey Mysterio to get its 20th anniversary win. That's exactly what it was. And bring, and, and bring Edge back on the second biggest pay-per-view of the year. I would have, like you said, I would have liked to turn and then Edge beat them all up tomorrow on Raw. Yeah, exactly. And then Edge and Ray go to save Dom. So, yeah. And then we could get, well, let's go off of that. They go to save Dom. Things are falling apart for Judgment Day. It seems bleak. Demon Finn Balor enters the fray, claims Dom, destroys Ray and Edge, and then we're now we're resetting the group. Maybe something's going to happen. I don't have faith in that kind of aspect. Not at all. Maybe Triple H will surprise us, but I think that would have been the way to reset Judgment Day into something more. Is that the Demon has saved us? All hail the Demon Finn Balor from their aspect. As of right now, I could, I mean, I could get hate. As of right now, Judgment Day, to me, is a new Retribution. I loved what Retribution was doing when they first came out. They tweaked it, and it sucked. Yeah. Uh, they tweaked it by taking Edge out of it, and it sucks. It sucks because there's no purpose. Yeah. And Retribution sucked because they took away its purpose. When Ollie became leader, they had so much potential for that, in my opinion. Yeah. But they, but to your point, they tweaked it in the wrong way, and it killed it. Yep. Because we talked about many months ago, I remember saying, I could have seen T-Bar and Mace becoming the new demolition of some capacity. They could have just destroyed people, ran over people. They're two big dudes. Now one of them's modeling, and I don't know where the hell T-Bar T is, doing something else on his end. Uh, God forbid, hopefully he comes back as Dominic Dijakovic in the next week. Yeah. week. But who knows? Um, but yeah, man, it, you're absolutely right. They are basically retribution right now. But they refined a purpose, not just fighting Edge, because that's a very short-term looking purpose. Get a purpose for the group outside of a rivalry, yeah. then you have something. Because that's how all the greatest factions are in history. The horsemen, they're chasing titles. They're the greatest of all time in the ring. You know, Shield, they're doing mercenary work. They're bidding for other people and they're ta dominating the tag team division, the singles title division. NWO is taking over the company. NWO is taking over the company. DX is just a bunch of degenerates running around causing ruckus on your show. That is what makes a great faction. Is their purpose is not a person. Their purpose is an entity or a thing that they are chasing together. They have a purpose. I think if Judgment Day is to succeed, it needs a purpose. And I think the only purpose is having that persona of Finn Balor, the demon persona, be their purpose serving him because I think it gives them a little bit more of a mean streak that I think they're just missing right now. They're I, missing them up on. I think you should spread those fingers apart a little bit more. I think it's more than that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Edge is back. Cool. Next up we have Happy Corbin against Pat McAfee. Man, the choir singing bomb ass Corbin. Corbin. <laughs> that was, that was my highlight. Yeah. Um, Corey Graves is right that Pittsburgh does not claim Pat McAfee at all. So shout out to Graves. Um, this match was slow. Yeah. This was not Pat's best match. And wonky, it might have been 900 degrees humidity out there. I'm not talking about, you know, wonky ropes or anything like that. No, that could happen to anybody inside, outside, whatever. So I'm not being that. I just meant in general, um, out of Pat's matches so far, and it might be the talent. Of course, we always say that he works with. Oh, by the way, the Mysterio match, we didn't rate that. Oh, did we rate the Lashley match? I don't think so. All right. I don't so, think so. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do Lashley and Theory first. Okay. I gave, that was like one and a half. I 
There was nothing to that, so I didn't actually. You know what? That's too generous. One, I'm going one on that one. Wow. So you're yeah. saying that was the worst match of the night? <sighs> All right, I'll go one and a half because there's a worse match. I think. I think we're both on the same point part with that, but um, I don't yeah. know uh, if well, it's I where you're know. going. I don't know if you're thinking. Well, I don't know which match you're thinking, so I guess we're going to find out here. I know it's not Roman and Brock. No. I can guarantee that. But, uh, okay, Judgment. Okay, what do you got for Theory and Bob? Theory and Bob, I'm going to give a two. Um, okay. Not not my favorite, but not the worst. Yeah. The Judgment Day Mysterios, that's my one match. I, w- I won't give a zero to anything. That's my one match because it did, and it only got a one because Edge came back. I'm getting... I'm giving that a two okay. because Edge came back. I didn't think of the match. It, there's too many wacky components to it. It was out of one. Like it was, but I wasn't going to give it like butt ugly zero for it. Okay. Edge came back. That was nice. But we knew he was. was we knew he was. There was no surprise there. I think the surprise would have been if they didn't do it and brought him back Monday. That would have been great. But anyways, yeah, two for me on that one. Um. All right. What's your thoughts on uh, Happy Corbin Pat Max? Uh, Bumass Corbin and McAfee. I think it was better than Judgment Day Mysterio. So I'm going to give that one a three because I thought it was good. It was too slow. We we've had this thing with Corbin before. Corbin can go, but he needs the right opponent to go. And I think Pat's just not experienced enough to get it out of Corbin. Right. The history behind it was a fun touch to it, so I'm going to give it a three off that. And also props to McAfee for being the first person to think to drop kick Corbin when he decides to run out of the ring and try to come back in to clothesline you. Because I, I, that was a happy surprise in there, so I give it a three. Uh, I'll probably stay there with you as well yeah. with a three. And again, Pat, after he gets the win, he goes around and gives everybody high fives, but he gives, guys, I told you, I've been saying this for weeks or maybe a month now, it's happening. We we yeah. we said it a little bit. He gives a cross chop to Corey Graves and says, "Suck it." Think if if it's being fed in his microphone, whatever Graves. I will go way back. We're about six months ago. People don't announce that Corey Graves is cleared to wrestle if he's never going to have a wrestling match again. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming at some point. I but I like it's a slow burn. I do too. I, I if, yes. If Pat's the first match. I love the slow burn for it. So we'll see what happens. I do bring up Corey Graves, by the way, in the interview with uh, Glenn Spector last night. He's Because Glenn and Corey um, both worked IWC. Corey under a, a different name. Uh, he brought up his name, and he's like, well, now you know that he's using his mouth to make his money. I said, yeah, in two different ways. And he's like, what do you mean by that? I said, oh, on WWE and Carmella. And then he went, I told you, it is explicit. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> um so Drew comes out and whatever. Finally get a Colt we finally get a Colt can in Nashville, Tennessee, not Nassau Coliseum. I I uh, like how he's on stadium. Yeah, he, go ahead. He says this is the first time that Brock and Roman have met in Nashville, in Nissan Stadium. In a last man standing match in front of all of you. Ew. What's your name? Colt. Colt. In front of Colt. I like how they they pulled that punch on themselves a little yeah. bit, saying, fuck, we know we've done this match a million times. Yep. And to have Drew do it is that thing that gave me saying Holy shit, he's going to win it at Castle Grayskull. Yeah, that's exactly where my thought went. That was too direct of a punch. It was. It will be perfect at Castle Grayskull. I, that's where my mind went, was he's definitely got to win this thing now. If he doesn't win it, I don't know who they go to. I don't know who they say. Is, it, is it Cody? Are we waiting to Cody then? But do we want to wait till Cody? I No. That's, I want, that's I, eight months away. That's eight months away. Why can't we just separate the titles? Right. That's that's, one, that's number one. Yeah. Why can't we make it for one of the titles at Castle Grayskull? Give it to Drew. 
Finn, if you want to keep Roman on a title, at least we have another world title out there to be defended. Because you know at some point Roman will take time off. And that's nothing against him. That's his... I, w- I would bet it's after Castle Grace call, win or lose. He's going to take time off. Yeah. So why not move one of the titles over, unless that's going to be their big thing. If they're still doing the draft at the beginning of October, maybe that's their big thing on the draft. Is we have to separate these, we have to do the brand split. Maybe there's long term broking there, and that's when they start moving towards that. I don't know, but my pick right now is sitting firmly in the court of Drew McIntyre to he win that. Never, match. he never had his pop of winning the title. He did not, not and, at all. And to give it to him, we know how WWE is. You don't win on your home turf sure. usually. And this is a long distance home turn. It's not going from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia or Pittsburgh to Erie. This is a long trek. There may be a riot if he doesn't. Oh, big one. And you ain't getting out of there too quickly. (laughs) You'll have another plane experience. Yes, exactly. Oh, man. I don't know. I, I Uh, I would have to think. Yeah. Castle Grayskull. Yep. Uh, a couple matches left, and we have the tag team match. Man, why didn't Jeff Jerry come out to be with my baby tonight? Oh, that would have been sweet, wouldn't it? That's one. So I'm already yeah. I'm already pissed at this match. So I'm like, well, he and has no. You don't like the street profits anyway, so that's another <laughs> dinger on this for you. Exactly. This match was doomed for you from the start. And then <laughs> I hate stupid things and it's not because the Steelers don't have cheerleaders and we knew at some point that the tight some form of the Titans were going to be there so we get the cheerleaders bringing the prophets out who live in red that is their whole fucking gimmick red solo cups now they're wearing blue white and silver because they're in Nashville you gotta gotta rep the Titans they had a red solo cup on the Titans you gotta see that the little uh, patch. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm not saying I hated this match. I'm not saying I didn't see this match before. I am saying that Jeff Jarrett did nothing in this match to make me think there he was needed. He caught one kick because he got kicked in the face Friday night. I don't think Jeff Jarrett... You could have put fucking a Brooklyn Brawler in. You could have put Kimchi in. You could have put me or you in. It was just because it was in Nashville that Jeff Jarrett was there. I agree, but I also think he did a lot better job than anything. I, I think, don't say, yeah, he didn't do a bad well, job, well, but he didn't fit into the storyline moving forward. Well, here's the epiphany I had during it. Big word this week. Um, this is the epiphany I had during the match. It was perfect. He didn't fit into the storyline, so how can you be biased if you don't fit into the storyline? You're so ass and ass backwards removed from street profits and usos in the bloodline. Jeff Garrett didn't make any sense besides being in Nashville. Well, that's perfect. How can you be biased? And then he's sitting there pulling street profits and usos off of each other, left and right, manhandling people. I kind of like Jeff Garrett in this now. I thought after seeing the match, I loved the whole thing about it. I will say that here. I thought he did good in the match. I thought he made sense afterwards. He made sense in the match beforehand. Did not think he made sense in the match. But to me, it kind of fit. And it kind of worked. Oh, by the way, I uh, you got Corbin right. And I did not. I got the Usos right. And you did not. Okay. So right now we sit four to four. Just All right. an FYI. That's fair. Um, and essentially, yeah, as I add it up, I win. <laughs> That's um, fine. No. Um, I, looking at it at your perspective, yes. But that could have been anybody else then in the WWE is what I'm just saying. Like, I know he is in the WWE. He's doing some writing or he's doing whatever. I understand that, but it's just because it's Nashville. He was there. Well, when they go to Duluth or what in years to come, where the fuck is Brock Lesnar from? 
Saskatchewan. Minnesota yeah. and Saskatchewan. Yeah. yeah. Anytime that they're in Minnesota in 10 years when Brock is a legend, he better be the referee then. You, you really think? For, well, no, now, wait a no I know. I'm, be, I'm playing I, it way over I the edge. I get it. Yeah. I'm playing. So anytime or in New York, you, you have to call so-and-so, you know, it's just because it was in Nashville, Tennessee, that Double Day, Double J was there. Yeah. Well, I let know. me ask you this. Was there one referee you thought could have did a – would have been better place than there? I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I think you bring in a legend at some capacity, but I don't know who you put in there as a legend, I guess. Because I think it made sense from the aspect of, okay, these refs aren't doing a good job. We have to do something. No, yeah. Now that I go back I, and look at the story, yes. Well, no, no, no. I get that. Yeah, I know. We're playing hindsight 2020 here in my head. But yeah. at the same time, I'm like, who who else could you have plucked in there? It could have been from anywhere, right? Because they did, when they did, even though it's an abysmal callback match, Cole and Lawler from WrestleMania 27, they brought Austin in to Atlanta to do it, right? So I get your point of saying you could bring in anybody else that would fit it kind of better to make sense or just whatever, to your point, they did Jeff Jarrett because it's in Nashville. Right. They got the pop they wanted from the legend of it. By the way, I knew they weren't going to say it, but the fact that they mentioned that Jeff Jarrett had a busy weekend that yeah. that this weekend was kind of like, oh, okay. We're you're flirting with the you're line. acknowledging it. it. Yeah. We acknowledge it like our tribal chief. Right. We're, yeah. Overall, um, what do you think of the match? Um, it was it was good. It wasn't great. It wasn't horrible. I I really think it was. I don't think it was a. Let me put it this way. I don't think it was your main event tag team match at a SummerSlam. If you know what I mean. Like this was the, the main event of a tag team. You know yeah. scenario. I don't think it was better than uh, Bulldogs and Heart Foundation. No. I don't think it was. You know. I don't. I don't it, it was good. But I'll forget about it in probably two months. Yeah. But I think we get something out of this this week. You're probably on the same wavelength I am, so I'm going to say it. We saw the cracks, and we saw the aftermath. Tez is turning. Well, yeah. Probably as soon as Monday night. Who has lost every match? Uh, Dawkins. For some reason, Dawkins didn't pop into my head. That's why it took me a second. But... Dawkins has lost every match. And if you notice, I love little details. And I'm going to point this out. When we talk about them watching the Usos go up the aisleway and they keep shooting back to the Prophets defeated in the ring, who's looking at the Usos? Dawkins, because he wants the titles. Who's looking at the mat? Because he's thinking, I'm not losing these matches. Yeah. It's Ford. And then he realizes who's losing these matches. The subtle details are there. The cracks are there. They have no purpose now. They don't. Cut the dead weight at this point. Ford's turning. But let me say, other than the Usos, because the other two teams that we've mentioned earlier, the New Day and the Vikings, are not on the level of either one of them, you don't have tag team again. You are going to break up your essential maybe number one selling tag team because, you know, they're fun and this, that, and the other thing. They sell a lot of merch. They're energetic. But on paper, they're not the number one because they don't have the titles. The Usos are. There goes the tag team division again. When, are are the, the models, which I, I, I'm okay with the gimmick. I'm not slandering them or anything. They're not coming up to challenge Usos at Castle Grayskull. You have to take those titles over to Castle Grayskull. To, I mean, this has to be a WrestleMania-esque pay-per-view for them. You've mentioned it, it, it. You haven't been over there in 30 years doing a pay-per-view. So you have to have every title on the line over there to mm -hmm. give them their comeuppance in the UK. Yeah. Who the hell is going to face the Usos over there? I don't know. But, yeah, I, I don't know. They have nobody built up for it right now. 
You Nobody you active t- right now on the current roster is built up for it. I could fantasy book things. <laughs> right? I could... You brought Dakota Kai back. Could you bring somebody else back to form an NXT team to take down the Usos? If you think about it, somebody's still a free agent out there that's not really doing much right now besides a random appearance on an impact, apparently. Yeah. And if you move Ciampa away from things with the Miz, DIY could be your best bet. Could. But that's fantasy booking. I think right now, and this is why I love Triple H again coming back and being in charge of creative and everything, tag team divisions at rock bottom. Your women's tag titles mean absolutely nothing. Oh, are they, they still there? Aside? Are they They're still there? St- they, exactly. Are they still there? Are we still doing this? Your tag team titles are for the men are undisputed. You have no challenging teams. This is absolute rock bottom. You can only go up from rock bottom. How do you do that? Let's start bringing in the pieces. Let's start rebuilding teams. If you're going to blow up the street profits, blow them up. Get Ford going because I mentioned it. We've said this. this, We've said this. Ford can be a pillar going forward for your company. Blow up the street profits. Bring in veteran guys. Bring in veteran tag teams that you know can have classic barn burner matches and have them go up. I really think tomorrow night on Raw, they hit the nuke button on a lot of things from the Vince McMahon at Creative Era, and they blow it up. Things are getting blown up tomorrow night. It's going to probably be one of their best shows because they're blowing up things and just setting everything back to zero. They have to reset the the entire company, and I think it's going to happen tomorrow night. I hope so. I can't agree with you more. I <laughs> agree. It just needs to happen. Boom. Yep. Adam Bomb, blow it up. Uh, and, I, and I mean the real Adam Bomb. Bomb, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that 90s Adam Bomb. Yes. Um, moving ahead, we get to see Kid Rock because he is the the guy that has – and this is what I brought up and I threw up on the interview with Glenn Spector. Is that Honey Boo Boo's mom? Remember the the yeah, fat little I, kid? I it, have no idea. They, they just is. start making out. That was gross and disgusting. It was. I'm glad I missed that. I didn't know <laughs> they kept mentioning Kid Rock. I'm like, oh, they must have shown him. I went to the bathroom. Good later in that time. Look up that clip. I, I did. I looked it up. I was scrolling Twitter right before we joined on here, and I'm like, what the hell is this? I stopped it after I saw Kid Rock. I'm like, I don't even want to know what's going on here. So literally, I, they put their tongues just full force down. Ugh. Sammy and Ty, they are not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, Riddle comes out. He's not clear, and he gets beat to shit by Rollins. Yeah. Great. I I would have I would have gotten more out of this if Riddle wasn't there. And supposedly Rollins was supposed to have something to do. Yeah. Did that get scrapped? Why not put Rollins in a match with AJ or Roll- yeah. give, give him something? At least Open he got his, yeah, his, his, yeah. his entrance and he got, you know, his to do's, but I didn't need this. This, this just says Riddle's not going to be around until Castle Grayskull. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So I think it was just, Hey, let's get Seth on the pay-per-view somehow and just kind of, Get his face out there. I thought when Triple H responded to the apology tweet from Seth earlier this week, we were going to get, oh, hey, some thrown together match. He was going to go say, I'll find you an opponent and just go find somebody from NXT or something to come up, have a good match with Seth, probably lose, but at least get Seth on the pay-per-view. I'm you, surprised it wasn't. You know what would have been cool? What? Braun Breaker. That would have been sweet. Seth not ready. Braun Breaker comes out, comes out destroys, destroys him, him, walks away. Yeah, yeah. Braun Breaker needs to be up, and I think he will be sooner than later. Oh, by probably by the draft. Yeah, I so. think so. Next match up or next event up. up or whatever. Um, let me first by saying this week I did. There was a great article about how Liv. Uh, has beat her family's demons and, and everything, and then I didn't know WWE made a. I was I was watching documentaries on WWE this week. 
I didn't know that they made a live documentary live. Oh, uh, yeah, that was a good documentary. I that watched was, it when it first came out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, I think, two years old now, but yeah. I finally stumbled upon it. It was really good. Uh, it's on Peacock. Go and watch it. Liv, I said this as soon as she won it. She's always going to be the underdog champ. Man, can she not get a... I, I really hate this. Can she not get a just decent win on her first one? Yeah. So she... Clearly, it should not have been Ronda. I didn't like the match. It was uh, horrible. Absolutely horrible. But I won't rank it a one because at least there was something at the end that can carry this forward. I don't want to see this match again next month. No. I think Liv loses the title sooner than later. I don't think it's to Ronda, though. I think Liv might lose the title by Castle Grayskull. She could. Yeah, this was, it was dumb luck. I, I hate, I always hate the double finish unless you can execute it perfectly. And that's only been done, what, once? Where it's a uh, tap-out pin combination. I think the only time I can remember that it actually worked was Angle and Undertaker. Because they, they're vets. I, I hated the match, too, by far. Because it just looked, made Liv look weak. Really weak. It looked, made it look really weak. She should have been in it a lot more. It was a fast, quick, what, six, seven minute match. I don't think it even exceeded if, that. Yeah. If that. It just made Liv look, I guess, some resilience because she kept getting to the ropes, but it just looked, it, it didn't, it wasn't good. No. And I think all it did was write Ronda off for an indefinite suspension until season premiere of SmackDown. Yep. Oh and, no! Yep, you put two and two together. That's what we're getting. Go ahead, say it. I think we're getting Liv and Ronda at the season premiere. No, this is not where you go. No, now wait a minute. I think Ronda gets the title back at the season premiere of SmackDown. This is where my mind went, and I think they give Liv. A couple months with it, and then Ronda takes it back on a squash match at SmackDown. Or she comes back and surprises her and gets an immediate title shot. That's where my head went. Where are you going with it? I'm saying Ronda's suspended for a while as well. Yeah. Because she didn't beat up a ref for no reason. Right. So you can beat up your opponent as much as you want after the match. You don't get suspended. As soon as you touch a ref, and Cole even said, there's going to be ramifications. Well, there is going to be ramifications. Right. We're going to need a number one contender. Who has not been back for a while? Charlotte. Charlotte oh, takes the title back from Liv. Nice. And we're getting Liv and uh, we're getting Charlotte and Flair. I mean, Charlotte and Ronda again. Because it's, right. I, I forgot about Charlotte. You're right. You're absolutely. We're getting Charlotte and Ronda. When do we get it, though? I I don't know. I I really think they're going to do something big at that season premiere of SmackDown when the draft is. So I think it's Ronda coming back from a suspension or Bit, they're having a title match. Bitching that she didn't get her title match and, it, and the title's already off of Liv by yeah. then. Yeah. I don't. I, I'm saying Charlotte because. You don't put it on Aaliyah. I I don't think Lacey is ready to, for a title. I just, I'm not into Lacey's character. Shotzi, who else do you have on SmackDown right now? Yeah. Raquel? You, I, 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 I would hate, as much as I love Raquel, I would hate that she would get the title this early. Yeah. Well, we said she needed, she needed more time. Yeah. Just to refine that character in that. God damn it. I forgot about Charlotte, to be honest. I just forgot she was hasn't come back, and that's on me because I just haven't thought about her for her since she left. So that's valid. Yeah, it's probably gonna be Charlotte, but maybe it's Charlotte live at season premiere and Ronda comes back at that point. I, I do. I just think Liv's gonna have it for at least another month. All right, through Castle Grayskull. So I think it times out perfectly if they do Charlotte coming back and she takes the title off of her or something along those lines, but. All right, uh, season premiere. Maybe I don't know who the hell Liv's going to defend it against at Castle Grayskull. Go ahead. Natalia. 
That was the last. <sighs> yeah, uh, she's got some beef with her. She's been, yeah. she's still working house shows with her. So okay, yeah. she gets a true title victory then over there, and then season premiere. Rhonda's still suspended or is not suspended. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She has to defend a title against Flair because she's worked her way up. Rhonda's pissed off and she comes out and costs live the match. Charlotte gets the title and then we rekindle that again. Yeah. Flair. It's going back to Charlotte and Rhonda. I. Yeah. Charlotte, Charlotte has another title reign in six months. months. Six yeah. months, something like that. Yeah. Then we, get, then we get to the main event. Oh, my God in heaven. Roman and Brock. Roman and the boys come out. Oh, what do you, what do you give the Liv Ronda thing? Two. I said it wasn't much higher yeah. than the Mysterio match. I give it 1.25. 1.25, wow. Yeah. I'll be generous and give it two. Maybe it's because I... Live one. I love live. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I I just don't like the booking they're doing with live. Yeah, for the love did, of God. Did we give the uh, Uso some profits? Anything? No. I don't think we did that one. What do you give it? Four. Middle middle of the yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say four four point five. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm good with four. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Roman and Brock spectacle. <laughs> yes, the spectacle of the evening. As soon as I saw him getting into farm simulator mode, I knew he was going into that bucket. I yeah. knew oh, yeah. he was I going like, who's, into... Who's going in? Who's getting thrown up? I didn't know if it was going to be the Usos getting put up there, and then they suspend them high in the air, and then they can't get out. That would have been a cool spot, but they didn't go that route. But yeah, at some point he was getting in that bucket. He's a big-ass country boy here to kick her over the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, by the way, hey, wait, I got to prop this. How about the smooth mic throw? Did you see the uh, back, the clip from the yeah. of that? Where Reigns just catches it with one hand and the smoothest goddamn catch I've ever seen in my life? Yeah. Oh, my God. I got to get props to that. I didn't hate this. This I love this. I, I love that it started as like a shoot fight. Yeah. And then it went outside. It, people are hating on this. They really are. Um, I'm not. I, I thought it was awesome. I love the stupidness. The only thing I didn't like about this was the fucking guy in the four horseman shirt taking fucking pictures. Taking selfies? I was going to say that. I almost fucking went through my screen and punched that guy. Get the fuck out of there. That's the damn match. You're not a supermodel. You are not a part of Max Dupree's modeling agency right now. Everybody in that section had a phone in hand. Watch the fucking pay-per-view. Man, they are five feet away from you, and you're fucking sitting there like, oh, look at this fucking selfie. <laughs> Come on. Thank you. What a disrespect to the four horsemen. Right. That they, you're wearing that shirt while trying to do that shit. Get With, the hell out of there. And you're wearing gym shorts to a pay-per-view. <laughs> I'm like, I'm there at least in khakis. Right. Khaki shorts, cargo shorts, something. Nah, yeah. fucking, that guy looked like he just came out of a pickup basketball game at the rec center across the street. I, I have a pair that are in the what, two and one, two for one. What are the Walmart brands? <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> you know which one? Like, him? Yeah. Yeah. He, he reversed him when he came into the stadium because he couldn't be, he had to do it. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, I love this. It started as a shoot fight. It got crazy and then it got outlandish. Uh, I, if you have not watched it yet, and you're listening to us first, please stop us right now. Fast forward the whole pay per view and watch. Jenks, were you pissed? Would you have been pissed if you were on that southwest corner and the ring is now picked up fucking 15 feet in the air and you can't see anything on the other side? You know what? No. I, nope. I would have been fucking fine with it. Oh, who the fuck would have thought I would see a piece of farming equipment lift the goddamn ring, let alone, I I'm good with it. I'm good with watching the Titantron or fucking looking at under the ring and hoping for the best <laughs> at the end of the night. Not like, that you can see me, but you like, <laughs> 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 
Is Horn, is Horn Swoggle out there? <laughs> is Boogeyman under there still? Where Where does this end of the ring? <laughs> Where's the depths of this ring at? But, uh I loved it. I do have one criticism. Jenks and I both talked about this. After he's knocked out 16 million times, and we'll talk about theory coming out because I have my own theory on that. Um, That's fun. Thanks. Yeah. I thought every time you touch somebody in a last man standing ma- match, like the count has to restart. Yeah. So wouldn't a piece of furniture or whatever kind of go with that as well? The million pounds of everything that they threw on Brock. Yeah. What? The Why count should still count? be happening because Uso's dragging people, uh, you know, steps. I, my thought was the rest. I think it was Chad Patton was like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. So I'm just counting. <laughs> the fucking ring's going to fall at some point. I need to get the hell out of here. That's the only thing I could think of. But yeah, you're right. The steps, every time something touches or adds to it, in the past we've seen it. They've stopped the count because they keep adding to it and they keep stopping it. Any video game you play, they stop the count if you swing a chair at the person or whatever. So I absolutely agree with that. Oh my God. I, I also, I think my criticism was the briefcase shot and the two title shots because maybe I thought there was going to be more to put down Brock at those times. But maybe that's because we had just seen a freaking tractor lift the ring 15 feet in the air and i thought there's might have been a nuclear explosion gonna happen in the middle of nissan Stadium. atom bomb atom bomb some shit <laughs> throwing them into fucking the timekeepers area and just like fireworks explode better than what happened in the exploding death match between omega and moxley earlier this year but i i don't know maybe i thought i was expecting a bigger boom than what actually occurred preceding the stacking of 25 things on top of rock the win Theory does come out. He attempts to cash in. He is taken out by Brock. And after two briefcase hits, he is dead. He, he is. He cannot move. He's in pa- he's Yeah, just he's out. Out. So we don't get to cash in. Um, I'm all right with it that it didn't really happen. Because I don't know where they would have gone or what. Or, you know, Drew would have probably dismembered him. Overall, fun match as entertainment. I don't think, again, we have to say Bianca and Bex is the best match, so this is a 5. I give it 5.5. I have to give it a half because it was the spectacle alone of it. All right, I'll go. I got, I'll jump I up go with, with you it. then. Yeah. We, we, uh, let's be honest, I, at least in my opinion. This is something I've never seen before where tractors left in the ring. And I'm going to keep or harping on it. thought about. I, it was so thought about. I honestly thought he was going to tip the whole goddamn ring over somehow and not injure people. I don't know how he would not have injured people, but I thought it was going at least somewhere where it was going to trap Roman in some way. But I got to give it 5.5, the spectacle of it all. I, I appreciate this match and I love this match besides four horsemen guy that I hope <laughs> gets Superman punched next time. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Overall, for pay-per-view, though, um, I, I think I have to give it, like, three and a half. Because there was a lot of, meh, there was three and a half, meh. four. Yeah. I'm going four. I, I wasn't giving it above four. I think Bex, Bianca, Roman, and Brock, and to an extent, the Usos profits kind of filled the void. But definitely, Bianca, Brock, or Bianca and Bex, Brock and Roman. Would have been good. I, I, Brock and uh, Bianca would be a hell of a match. It would That's be a hell of a there, match. But, let's book that. Uh, yeah, let's book that. But yeah, I think four. One criticism I have to say, uh, I the entrance was way too long. Like some people cannot keep up their entrance for as long as the entrance way was. Yeah, yeah. They need to. They need to bring back the uh, moving ring cards. I said the same thing last night. Yeah, I said bring them back. In, in my mind, I said the same thing last night. All right. Um. So not bad. Not. Great, fun to watch. Um, I will say this. In two Triple H shows, I think the needle is up. We're going in the right direction. We are definitely tracking. I think 
AEW, I'm not saying it's going to put AEW out of business, no. but what I'm saying is it's going to produce some great wrestling television that's going to bring a lot more people back from AEW to watch both brands, in my opinion, because we're in the right righteous age here. And if the rumors are true, he's looking to uh, bring the NXT banner back, at least in the capacity of creative-wise. I don't think they're going to go through a whole color scheme change now, but I think... I think we're on the right track here. We have the right person in charge. We've been begging for this for a long time. I think it's on the right path forward. So I agree. All right, let's take a hot second break, and you can listen to somebody. I don't remember who is coming up, but somebody is coming up. <laughs> and then we'll come back, and we'll, we'll touch on AEW this week. I don't think we have to do a deep dive to some of our favorite things. So you good with that, yep. Jinx? I'm good with that. I don't know how you tasteless trash – stumbled upon this podcast but you happen to be graced by the podcast can crushers that had the greatest wrestler on for an interview that's right it's me the big boss of the iron city wrestling academy the big boss of iwc big boss glenn specter and you're listening to the can crusher podcast Welcome back can crushers to the aew segment of our festivities today that was a little too formal, but we're that was, that. <laughs> we went from tipping rings over to being proper and formal all of a sudden. <laughs> we had to balance it. We had to balance the farm action with some uh, formality around this. So, so Jenks, we were talking with Cody Hetrick earlier this week on our our text link and everything. Uh, he brought up a great question, and as I think about it, I think it's going to be a great subject to start the show with next week. To see what Triple H does after he did last night or this morning for both of us and going forward. Because yeah. Cody asked us a question and we'll reveal it next week. And we really want to spend time on it because some of it has happened. But we want to know we'll bring it back as well. Yeah. So I know you guys are like, what the fuck is Mark talking about? You'll get it. Just let me say, Dakota Kai is the start of it. Yes, I would agree wholeheartedly with that. Perfect teaser for it. And I don't want to not give it enough time. I think this week, the shows will be good. Raw, I think, should be good. But we don't have a pay-per-view to spend an hour on covering as deep as we went into. Yep. So I think like that could be a great question for the start of next week, which again, guys remember next week, it will be a Saturday release. That's when we're doing it. Uh, a little bit of the bubbly will be flowing Friday night for both of us. So we'll be good to go. Is it, go ahead. Uh, we did liquor last time. And I know we said we we're going to bounce back and forth every other week. And it doesn't matter. Yeah. We, we can drink whatever, but right. as of now, right now, Six days before we record, what do you think you're going with Friday uh, I night? Think, I'm thinking I'm going to have beer because I have I had beer from the family thing last night here, so I don't think I'm going to burn through that. So I think we're going to be on beer, pale ales, and summer shandy kick on Friday night is where I'm at. What do you think? I was definitely going beer as well. Okay. Right, I, yeah. Yeah, because I, I think I will probably do – we started with liquor. I will probably do liquor, beer, beer, liquor, beer, beer. I, I I don't know if I can do every other week liquor. I'm not yeah, saying I was a, a champ or a bag of shit the next day, but I was not um, performing at the highest capacity. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually have to restock the liquor. I got to get screwball, and I think I want to get something else though for next time. And I don't know what it is. Um, it's definitely not the maple crown that I have in my freezer. That was absolutely trash, but, uh, I'll have to think of what to do with that. I was looking forward. My next liquor is going to be a whip vodka and I love mixing Ooh. it with random sodas. So I'm a, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I could do, I have Tito's in the freezer. So maybe I'll do a. Cranberry vodka or something like that, because I do love my cranberry juice. So maybe I'll do that one of these times as well. Yeah. Um, I definitely got to get some crown apple at some point. I think that's going to end up getting in the rotation here, too. I think I'm saving that because you brought that up. I think that's going to be when we talk about Cap Castle Grayskull. Good call. You know what? That's probably a good call. Yeah, I'll say that. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'll sit on that. All right. People that don't know what the hell the pay per view is called, to they're gonna be like, "Why is it called Grace Call?" I don't. I really don't know what it's called. Oh, uh, shit. I don't know. Now. <laughs> We're on the. It doesn't matter. We're on the AEW yeah. portion. We don't talk about WWE and AEW. Go. Yeah. Dynamite was good. Oh, well, Dynamite was great. Um, I, let me let me say this though, real quick. After Dynamite, I read that the audience left. For Rampage, and they actually asked people to shift all the way over to the other side. Really? I did not read that. Oh, my God. Yeah. And you'll see when I touch... I mean, I I fast-forward through Rampage, except for the music video. And if you have not watched a music video, hot damn. Um, I wish they would have done the theme song when I reached <laughs> out to somebody. <laughs> and I might as well just do it now. Shots on anything that Billy Gunn has ever done. Ass Man, Smoking Gun, DX. Oh, my God. And it leads up to a dumpster match this Wednesday. It's awesome. <laughs> so go watch the Acclaim's music video. But, but one half of this podcast did not watch this, so that was a hell of a yeah. preview for it to come for me later today. Yeah. Oh, man. And Tony Khan... You have ripped so much stuff off from us for years now. You could not have made a phone call to Can Crushers, a fucking podcast run by a garbage man, to be your garbage man for this video. <laughs> Let's see how long this, you're going to be the longest CEO. Yeah, right. <laughs> Roosh against Moxley. I have loved Roosh. For a long time. Yeah. But people that don't know him should now be on his horns or whatever because yeah. this match was – I mean, most of it took place outside the ring. I I don't care if you're going to hate that, love that, or whatever. It was so hard hitting. And I thought we were going to get a new champ. I honestly Thanks. thought with the straight jacket pile driver, I thought – Fuck, I didn't see this happening. Yeah. He came very close to winning this. This this was probably... I did not... So the first 45 minutes of Dynamite, I was losing my shit through all of it. This was the cap off. To me, I had some exposure to Rouge. There wasn't a lot before that. This match has solidified it that I need to go back and do some more research around him and his style and his work ethic. They did a great job going through the history of him during the match, but my God, you're right. After the straight Dr. Power Driver, I thought it's over. This is done. Moxley's losing it. I don't know why, but it's going to happen. Yeah. And it, it would it would fit perfectly because it would have been like an out-of-place moment, but it would have been fine for Dynamite because I think that would have been something exciting to see in that. So, oh, man, great, great opener. Mox, Mox has not missed. At all. No. In, at all. Since joining AEW. No, not at all. Then we get Jericho. Mm. But this I'm gonna wrap what happened on Rampage into this as well. That you, okay. So yeah. Jericho comes out and essentially challenges him by Quake by the Lake, I fucking love. That's that That's right now thing, is man. my favorite pay per view name. <laughs> it's not even a pay per view, it's just a show on Wednesday night, but Quake by the Lake, yes, awesome. Essentially challenging him for the interim championship. Mox says it's not interim. Go fuck yourself. You know, I'm the champ. I'm the first two-time champ. They won't acknowledge that. Jericho wants to be the first two-time champ. Yada, yada. I like this little pissing match. I do too. This is cool. So did you – all right. Before I tell you what happened on Friday, you like this. I love this. This was a good back and forth. You're right. It was a pissing match to say, no, I'm the two-time champ. Yada, yada, yada. I also like that they're going back – even though it's just the nickname and that, I like how Mox is like, I want the lion heart. I want the bringing up the history, like the one, the one persona of Jericho that was hungry for a title was just hungry to be recognized, was hungry to be in the business and to be, to succeed. Cause after he changed from Lionheart, arguably he was succeeding and he was winning titles. He was winning world titles. So the hunger was gone to that extent. So he doesn't want the goat. He doesn't want the wizard, the mag magician, whatever the hell he's going the by. Pain maker, yeah, the pain maker, yeah, anything like that. Give him the Lionheart. 
I loved that little segment between the two. Did I roll my eyes when Jericho walked out? Yes. But hey, whatever. And also, props to Anna J. She gave a good pro- a great promo to set up her heel run here. So I'll give her definite props on that. I was a fan of that too. I've always been an Anna J fan more so than Ty. I always yeah. said that injury Anna J was getting to push towards Brit. Not saying she was gonna take it against Brit, but she really not never got that match against Brit. Um, I think when she hurt her shoulder and everything, she was at that point replaceable and they made Ty. Yeah. I think and I know an injury's sometimes never good. I think that injury served well for Anna J. Because could we have seen Sammy and Anna right now? Maybe she would have been the one because Ty wasn't at that level. No yeah. no disrespect to any of them. Um, she wasn't at that level. Maybe Anna was just going to get shifted around. Nope. Everything had to get reset. Ty is now married to, you know, here and Sammy. And not that that could have changed or anything, but I like for wrestling that Anna did this slow burn back up, but they still mention Brody Lee all the time. Yeah. She might be with a jackass society. She's still under Brody Lee. All the time. When does that become the talking point where she goes full hero? Because I think that them bringing it up, she can use that in a promo to say, I'm breaking out of Brody's uh, shadow because he has not gotten me to this point. He got me to a point, but I eclipsed it. And she uses it as a heel promo. And to say, gets heat, it, it, white it, fucking it, heat. Exactly. That's where I think the payoff is going to be is when she uses that for that white heat and it's just nuclear at that point. I I don't want I don't want it soon. I want a slow burn. No, with her. it's gotta be it's gotta continue to be slow. Let's keep getting her cheap victories, anything of that nature, and let's keep getting her with some promos and that. At some point she will cross the dark order again. Some incarnation or some members of that. I think when that happens, I think they'll play that card maybe. So I think they're going to keep them separated for a long time. And then they're going to play that card at some point with that. Agreed. To shift back to Mox and Jericho, on Friday night, Claudio came out. He was celebrated to be a new champ. He gets, the crowd goes apeshit crazy. You deserve it, this, that, and the other thing. He brings Yuta out. Essentially, before Yuta can say anything, Jericho steps up and starts talking shit on Yuta. And Yuta's like, I can't hear you. I can beat you, this, that, and the other. So Jericho says, hey, Yuta, next week, I'll put my championship match against Mox on the line at Quake at the Lake if you beat me. So Wednesday, it's going to be Jericho against Yuta. Winner of that takes on Mox at Quake at the Lake. Oh, my God. Which one do you want more? <laughs> I kind of want Yuta again. I I mean, the Jericho Mox promo was fire. Loved it. I want to see Yuta Mox again. Are they going to do that in the BCC already? Yes, because I don't think it would be a breaking. I, You know what? I'll back that off. Probably not. In, but in my mind, I don't think it would break up the group. I think it would be a test of strength type activity within the BCC. Regal's always talking it up. Any opponent that a BCC member has, he will talk up to the live on end. Um, so for him to say Yuta versus Mox, they're going to talk that up. I think you could say that's a test of uh, where you're at in your career. It's a benchmark test. Whatever you want to call it, is he going to beat Mox? Probably not. Definitely not if he would get the title shot. But I think it's that benchmark test that they like to have in the BCC because that's how that group's built. Let's give them benchmarks. Let's give them, hey, can you beat this guy? Can you beat that guy? What can you do here, here, and there? The young lion need, has to challenge the alpha occasionally. At some point, you're just going to beat an alpha, one of the alphas in the group again. I don't know. Devil's advocate over here. It's not for yeah. the ROHA pure title. It's not for this. I think it sets up for Yuta and Sammy. 
because Sammy interferes to give Jericho right, the win. The win that could be. Well, yeah. As much as we were... both want you to mox again, yeah, I don't I, think we're getting it. I'll agree with that because they did have a little thing with Sammy and Yuta, or at least some little tidbits dropping here. So yeah, probably the pure weight title. It's probably going to be on the line at All In or All Out, whatever pay per view is called. They keep getting them mixed up, but it'll probably be on the line there. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, as well at All Out, uh, we're going to have the Trios Championships, as we've been talking about for six months. Yeah, and they've already teased teams. Uh, I think one team that hasn't formally joined together, they've teased pretty much. No? Who? You don't think the Bucks and Page are going to be together? Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 I think that was teased. There's a tournament coming on Wednesday. Undisputed elites in the ring. Back. Back. Cole's going to announce he's going to go with Red Dragon to get the trios titles. Bucks are going to feel slighted. You have Paige. It's going to happen. Honestly, I think the finals for that trios title is Bucks and Paige versus the under, the Red Dragon and Cole. I already see the tournament finals. And I'm pissed that. if it is. Are you? I love everybody you just mentioned. Yeah. They can't be the first of fucking everything. Why can't it be Brody King, Malachi, and Buddy? Fair. And maybe I'm wrong, but... Uh, no, I... Again, I am complete yeah. devil's advocate in AEW all of a sudden this well, week. Here, no, that's fine. We, we need that. Because I agree, they can't be the first in every fucking thing. But Adam Cole has only won the Owen Hart title. Nothing <laughs> against that. He won the tournament. He won the title. Red Dragon hasn't won anything yet. This is setting up for them to win, but I think it also brings in Kenny Omega back from the sidelines. If you want to bring Kenny Omega in, there's a play here with Omega, the elite, the, whatever you want to call him, undisputed elite, the elite, whatever. He's friends with all of these guys, technically. He's been rumored to be cleared. Or he's ready. He's ready to come back. There's a fight in the family. Who do you bring back? The one guy that's out of the family. Brandon Cutler. Yeah, Brandon Cutler. <laughs> you bring in Brandon Cutler to settle this whole thing with Cold Spray, and it all goes away. Done. By the way, how fascinating! How how great would that be to see Cutler running between corners, Cold Spraying everybody in the match? That would I think be... that would be the most hilarious yes. comedy part of this whole thing. If he's just Cold Spraying people left and right. Agreed. So, yeah. Oh man, I was I was disappointed. I was hoping it was going to go the other way, um, but I love how it actually ended up. Then you get Dan Housen against Starks for the FTW Championship. Didn't last long. Then we get the handsome devil himself. Hook. Hook. Oh my god! The way I jumped up, I was like, "How is the Dan Housen match that quick?" And then when he challenged again and Hook marched out, I'm like, oh, shit. Fuck. Well, here we go. Love that quick match. Right. I love the transition from Rochambeau into the Red Rum, by the way. That was smooth as shit. My but heart broke after. My heart broke after. It did not for me, actually. Uh, I've been saying this. Team Taz has not been Team Taz. Yeah. Hobbs turns on Starks. Okay. Essentially, that leaves Hook by himself now, as he's been anyway, or maybe with Danhausen to be buddies and do whatever. Yeah. Cool. That that's going to be a great title for him to excel, continue to build his career. I, you said, we said, Starks needed to get away from this title. Right. Perfect. I understand it's a tag team that we both wanted to probably have titles for a little bit. No, no. I really now want Starks and Wardlow. But, of course, he's got to get through He's got to get through uh, Hobbs first for a little bit of time. So it's not going to be an all-out or anything like that. Yeah. I Yeah. Starks, it, in six months, and as much as I want Wardlow to hold it for five years, Starks is going to be your TNT champion with a long run. Yeah. No, I agreed. And... Excuse me. It had to happen sometime. My heart broke because I didn't think it was going to happen. It just seemed like everything happened very quickly. 
And that's what tripped me up. Because it was almost like Ricky Stark's life just imploded on him in a matter of seven to ten minutes. Yeah. He was only facing Dan Housen. Then he got cocky. Hook comes out, blows him up, beats him. They have their camaraderie, whatever. And then he's cutting the best baby face promo I've heard from him or from anybody in that company in a while. And he just, as soon as he said Hog in that stiff ass shot, my fear is because it happened, everything happened quickly and everything unfolded quickly, there's an injury lingering and they had to write him off TV. That is my one fear right now is that we don't know about an injury that could be on the horizon. Maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. But it just seemed like everything went really quick and ended really quick that it seemed out of place for me. And that's not a knock on it. It just seemed it was too quick for me. I personally love the seven minutes of it because yeah. because of – Everybody was guessing: Is Team Taz really a thing? Is yeah. Team, you know, like this way? It wasn't. Oh, we we really just lost Hook because he took the FTW title and ran with it. Now, do we need that long ass breakup of Hobbs and Sarks not getting the titles? Maybe one screw and the other one. Over? No, it was just like boom, the implosion of Team Taz because Taz has not been part of them no. months now. Because he doesn't, he doesn't need to be. I don't really know if it's been called Team Taz. Besides Taz making reference every once in a while, I, I, I thought it was best for all involved. Like Hobbs can go be a beast again somewhere. And, yeah. You know, I think if anybody loses in all of this, though, it is Hobbs. Yeah, I I would agree with that because I don't know his direction. He didn't have a direction before this. No. And it just seemed like he turned on Starks because he didn't have the FTW title. And I doubt he's going for Hook. Maybe he is. I don't know. But Hobbs has no direction out of this outside of he's going to get Ricky Starks in the future. Yeah. But hopefully we get something where Hobbs is a beast. He's a monster. Hopefully we see where that transpires and he can start running through people again. But Sammy and Ty... Not, not together. Sammy with Ty take on Dante Martin and Sky Blue. Sammy wins. I mean, it. the match between Sammy and Dante did nothing really no. for me. It was about Ty coming out and then Anna coming out and beating the shit out of um, Sky. Mm-hmm. Giving Ruby something to do. Because if you want to talk about somebody who nothing to do, it's Ben it's Ruby. Ruby, yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. This is where Dynamite kind of lulled for me a little bit because this, the next match, kind of were like, why are we even doing this? It, it just stopped dead in its track. It kind of killed the momentum and really lulled it for about a half hour, 45 minutes, however long that ended up taking. But yeah, I would agree. It just set up a lot of things going forward, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll skip what really happened next. Um, Nice and Sterling against Swerve. I could yeah. have given two shits about this, that, and I, I yeah. could have given two shits that Woods beat up uh, Keith Lee too. Like, okay, there's your next tag team that's going to run after them. Right. I don't care. Uh, yeah. We t- we touched on the Young Bucks and Brandon backstage. Okay. Thunder against Yomashka. It was physical. It was mm-hmm. cool. I didn't think. Rosa was going to lose ever no. because it's already being, it's Brit again, right around the corner. I, yeah. whatever. Um, I want to say JR said something that might be relevant in five months. So maybe it's not brick that takes the title off. JR says, it's Thunder Rosa time. Who comes out to something like that? It's not wrestling right now. Oh, it's no. boss time. Oh, you think? JR, why, why the hell would JR say that? Why does JR say a lot of things? I know. I but, made my, no, I took it the wrong way, but. No, I like, listen, don't get me wrong. 
Love it. Love it to death. By the way, you guys, you should have saw his eyes when he said love it. They were like, love it. Love it. Uh, I mean, I can't argue it because I would love to see that. I just don't know. I, Do I, she can't keep the title. Be, Sasha or Mercedes has already said she's not wrestling till 2023. Yeah. Br- so, Rose is not keeping this title to 2023. It would set up the perfect foil for Brit. I mean, yeah, you're right. Revolution coming knocking. New Year's Slam? I don't know. I I don't hate it. And then we get the but the match itself, whatever. I mean we're yeah, we're it, blowing it, it, along. Yeah. Uh Danielson against Garcia. I don't, this was a catch as catch can match. I I really liked it. I honestly love that they didn't give the win to Danielson on his first match back. I don't want this do to be too. a feud. No, I think it was the right setup. I feeling like it feels like it's Hager Danielson at all out. That's where the match is going for me because it's that's what put him out at the end of the Anarchy in the Arena. Hager was involved. Now he's involved in costing him his first match back. This is just boiling up to Hager Danielson. I think at the pay per view. Yeah. So I, think, I love this match. This match is great. I think it does a lot for Garcia. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. You put one of the best technical wrestlers down, not by tap out, by referee stoppage because he passed out. Yeah. That's the key distinguishment here. This puts Garcia in a whole other stratosphere, and maybe we need to start looking at him as one of those four pillars coming up here because they just gave him a huge victory over a legend. But the best thing on Dynamite, yeah, we have to go back to it. Oh, yeah. We're, that's, oh, yeah. I'm yep. glad you didn't jump in it. Jungle Boy and Lucha come out. Oh, Talk a little God. bit. When was the last time you've heard Pussy on uh, national TV? God, I couldn't even <laughs> tell you. And I love that it would seem like it was going to be a normal interview until he just yelled it. <laughs> right? And I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. Here we go. He was taking shot after shot after shot on that one. Brought uh, up his divorce. divorce. How he's yeah. got a short prick. Yeah. And then Christian answers too. Like people were like, eh, Christian's segment wasn't that great. I I thought it was great. He was talking about murdering him. Yeah. Legit murder. Like there's you have first degree murder charges if it happens. Yeah, it's right there. I loved every second of this. This is going to be the blow up to this will be unfucking believable. And I don't know if Lucha stays with Jungle Boy. I don't think so. I think this is a whole slow Christian. You go with him, yep. make him feel safe, and then we turn on him at the pay per view. Which leaves there, Jungle then to fight Lucha for the next couple of weeks. There's two. Exactly. There, there's at least two matches into this. Yeah, I think we have the pay per view match, and then it's Jungle after that. Jungle Lucha after that. Yeah. I think that's just the way this looks. There's no way this Lucha source is on his side. And it's a in the whole scheme of this. Jungle Boy might be getting title shots by the end of next year. Because this is going to linger the rest of this year. Yeah. No, I agree. Well, and that's what we thought was going to... We wanted it to happen. We needed to see him break out. Jungle Boy's coming back into my conversation again for Pillars. We can keep harping on it. But I took him out. I think he's going to come back in, and I agree with you. He's going to be either chasing TNT titles, and we're getting programs with Ricky Starks and him for that, or... Does he go after the big belt? Get that first shot at the big belt. Not get it necessarily by the end of next year, but get the first shot at the big belt and try to take it down. We also haven't talked about the mid-Atlantic, mid-All-Atlantic, mid the, the, As, that title in a while. Can that, we? Yeah. But let me ask you this. Was it put on um, Pac? Pac I don't know why I couldn't think of it, but my mind was going a mile a minute with this. 
Was it put on Pac so he could just defend it overseas while he's there? Yes. And they're just getting it around, getting prestige on it right now? Because that's exactly what this feels like, is he's going to Rev Pro and defending it. He's going here and defending it. But he's facing it overseas because he was he lives part-time in the UK, lives in the U.S. sometime. So that's where it feels like. So we don't forget about Pac. He's still defending the title. I just wish we could get those matches, full here. matches somewhere. Yeah. Whether it's on AEW.com, say, oh, hey, here's a Rampage. Here's a match of Pac defending the title at Rev Pro this past Saturday night. Drop them in on Dark. Even, yeah. if, even if they're recorded a week, you know, that happens on a Tuesday night over there, but we're going to get it the following Tuesday. Exactly. Yeah. You, you don't have time constraints on YouTube. No. You can drop it on YouTube in Dark and say, hey, your main event of Dark is Pac defending the title last week. We mentioned it on Dynamite, but here's the full match. Enjoy. Yeah. Let's let's bring the Mid-Atlantic title back up, because I just feel like it's... It, it, we it's, have it, but... We have it, but we made it, but nope, we don't do anything with it. Like, when, so. when he comes back to the States, I would imagine he has to defend it instantly, because there yeah. may be people that forgot about it already. Oh, yeah. If you're not fully watching Dynamite and you walk out when they do the clip segment for that, you're not going to remember it. Yeah. Oh, it's shit. in the back of my mind. I do it every time I see the clip. I'm like, oh, yeah, he does have the Mid-Atlantic title. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so Dynamite, great. Dynamite, great. As I kind of mixed everything together, uh, Moriarty against Matt Seidel was an okay. I love Lee Moriarty. It was an okay match. Uh, Stokely comes out and causes some kind of havoc. Moriarty finally takes Stokely's card, so yeah. Uh, keeping it in Pittsburgh, Cole Carter got his own spot. QT comes out. Cole doesn't get to say anything. Uh, takes shots about Cole Carter sleeping with the fishes, and his gimmick sucked on, they didn't say NXT, but you know, <laughs> we haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Da, 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 da. So we're going to get Cole Carter and QT. Kind of getting Cole built back up since he's been gone. Yeah. Um, Team Lethal fought Best Friends at, I, yeah, I... Somehow, I, I was, guess I was surprised Best Friends won. I did see that result. Yeah. I did see what happened there. I was kind of surprised by that, but... Yeah, leading up to things, I don't know. Yeah. Again, the music video by Acclaim, if I haven't said it enough, you have to watch that. In the main event, no disrespect, I, I love them both, Ruby and Anna. Um, meh, no, that's the main event. <laughs> yeah, it's it was what it was. And it, and it got the, the downfall is like Ruby must be. And I'm saying this as a wrestling fan because I don't know what's in her head or anything. Ruby just must be really happy with her being able to go. She's doing something as um, the Riveter in Indiana where she's where she started. So yeah. she must be happy being able to go places and actually working with the younger kids because. As a fan of Ruby's, she hasn't done much in yeah. AEW. But she looks like she's having a blast. Yeah. Well, I think that's it. She's having a blast. She can do what she wants. She has creative freedom over her gimmick. And now, you're right, she can put over younger talent. She can build up the younger talent, teach them, do more things. I think it's just where you're at in your career. If that's what she was striving for and wanted to do in WWE but couldn't because they were holding her back, they said, you can't do this, you can't do that. Because we know how restrictive their contracts are. Right. I think with AEW, she finally has that freedom to do work with younger kids, work with younger talent, work with creative freedom on the runner race, get, it, get everything going with it. I think, yeah, I think she's happy as, happy as a clam, as the young kids say. No young kid ever says that. But Is it, yeah. a, is it a lark? It's not a clam. I, I always said happy as a clam. Are and clams happy? A lot of people around here say happy as a clam. Parts unknown. All right. Um, that's the way that we're going to end that for the week because we're done. We have <laughs> nothing else to bring up. We got up. nothing. We can't beat happy as a clam or I lark can't. or yeah, I can't. happy go lucky. Happy Corbin. Ugh. <laughs> Good luck to everybody that watches Ric Flair's last match times three tonight. Um, it's still in the back of my mind. I don't know. I it's money. By the way, you lost 
uh, SummerSlam, it was five, six to five. By the way, what did I, what did I say, Ronda? No, you oh. pit, you had Austin winning it. Oh, that's right. And I I stuck with Roman. The ones you got wrong, you picked the Street Profits, and Austin winning it. Yep. That's I right. had Corbin. Is what screwed me. Yep, gotcha. So, all right, guys. Next week, a uh, little bit of a talk as we answer that question from Cody Hetrick from the Forty Year Dash, and we'll do a recap. I don't have anything else, Jenks. Let's just that's, that's wrap all it up. I got. <laughs> wrap it up. Go home. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Ben.